Welcome to the Impact Lounge. You are in the number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan. This is the Cool Factor Podcast. I'm your host, TW. And of course, with me is the man with the plan, BQ. Say what's up to the people. Yo, what up, everybody? Pop my collar one time. Um, what's <laughs> up, everyone? Uh, another really good episode of Impact Wrestling to talk about. And, uh, you know, I mentioned last week, dude, that you were all clean shaven. It looked really weird. So you, you got a little something coming back in. So it's... There you go. You know, there you know what it reminded me of was uh like LL Cool J. Like every <laughs> once in a while he'll like well, I mean I think he's always clean shaven now, but he's always have like a little bit of mustache. And then one day mm-hmm. he one day he would just come out completely clean shaven. He would just like look so different to me. Yeah. Well, listen, ladies, any ladies out there in Impact Lounge land, um, you heard it from the man with the plan BQ. I look like LL Cool J. No need to cross-reference a picture of LL Cool J. Just know that you think LL Cool J looks good. And he said I look like LL Cool J, and you can take his word. So, I look like LL Cool J. I'll there you take go. it. <laughs> um, he's also, like, ageless. So, um, Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah. One of these days, I'm going to give up cookies and see if I can actually look like LL Cool J. Give up cookies. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, man. Yeah, I, Listen. I think I think every man has undergone, you know, a, a shaving incident at some point. And listen, I own mine. I own mine, baby. It's okay. Um, I also, I also, I've I've ventured into haircutting on my own too. And it's cool because I am fighting the the good fight against male pattern baldness. And uh, <laughs> and the the good thing is, like, I've decided that I'm not gonna go out weak with trying to do like comb overs and you know fugazi hairstyles don't look good i'm just go down to the 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 kobe rip the doc rivers the zero fade you know what i'm saying the doc rivers yeah yep 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 just rock the zero (laughs) fade and you know what i mean and that way y'all won't even be able to tell so you know what i mean so when the when the hair is like gone gone then this is gonna be a very natural transition you know what i mean like just take this extra little bit off and then Boom, pang, boom, pow, surprise. <laughs> so. I've been sh- I've been shaving my head since I was. So when you go to basic training, the first thing they make you do is like they, they just shave your head. And uh, after that, I was like, dude, I, I love this. And I just never, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. never got away from that. So I always have to tell people it's like I, I do have hair, um, <laughs> but I but I usually cut it. I, I it's rarely uh, super short when I come on here. But uh. yeah, I usually it's like get it get it pretty are, do, do you do clippers or are you like a razor guy I, I use clippers now i used to um i used to have a razor so i used to bring on my deployments with me mm-hmm. it was like it's like a razor you wear as a ring oh wow okay. a blade mm-hmm. and you just like oh <laughs> just god, do this man. like you were combing your hair yeah wow oh. <laughs> oh my god you you, you met just woof yeah you get, you get, <laughs> One one finger in the wrong place. You ain't got no eyebrows. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh man! All right. Um. So real quick before we get started, ladies and gentlemen, please take a moment to like, comment, rate, and subscribe. No matter what platform you are listening to this on, it helps out the channel tremendously. If you just you know go ahead and hit that like button you see right there. We'll wait. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button so that you're subscribed to the channel and. Hit that notification bell so that you get notified each and every time we drop some brand new fire content on this page. And the most important thing you can do to help out the channel is tell a friend to tell a friend. Let's bring more people into the conversation. And um, yeah, let's keep growing the Impact Lounge community. Um, Also, if you're on Facebook, go to the Impact Lounge engagement group on Facebook. And it's a it's a place for, you know, dedicated, committed fans to, you know, to 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 ch- chat about impact, you know, not have to deal with like the hater trolls and really just kind of, you know, talk about the show from, um, you know, from 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 a source you can trust. You know, what I mean, like y'all f- y'all follow us. Y'all hear the stuff we talk about. Y'all know that everything we say is not going to be positive about impact, but it's going to be real. You know, what I mean, it's going to be real. It's going to be honest and it's going to be, you know, coming from. Um, a place of wanting to see the show be better, wanting to see the company be better and all that good stuff. Yeah. And we're really, 
very selective of the people in there, and we don't want to have one of those groups where people are ask some stupid ass, like, what are the chances of AJ Styles returning at Slammer? Like, if you're part of some of these other groups, people, you know, not trying to be, like, super disrespectful to people, but people be starting some stupid ass threads. And, yeah. uh, you know, we're trying to, like, keep it very real and grounded and, and you know, down to earth, everything we, we talk oh, yeah. about in there. So it's been cool oh, yeah. so far. So speaking of talk about Impact Wrestling, um, today I think we're going to see the return of the mailbag from the comment section. We're going to get back to some of your comments. We are going to talk about this week's show. But first, BQ, what in the world of Impact Wrestling has been on your mind this week? All right, so not, we're really we're trying to be very careful how to talk about this because there's a lot of spoilers and all that shit going on. So we don't want to get too much into like, who could be there, who's not going to be there, things of that nature, because some people don't know what's going on. Some people know everything that's going on. So we're going to try to be careful uh, throughout this episode going into that. So we're going to not talk about too much of what's what's in the news, but uh, one positive thing was uh, the viewership was up to 126,000. Uh, so it was at 111 last week. So we got to, you know, Fifteen thousand dollar, fifteen thousand dollar, yeah, fifteen thousand <laughs> individual increase. So that's a good, that's a good thing. We talked last week that any kind of increase is a good thing. That you know, in, in the grand scheme of things, fifteen thousand people is not a lot when you're talking about TV, but it is a lot of people. So it is, you know, we do want to see more eyes, and any kind of growth at this stage is a good thing. We just want to see it trend up because uh, you got to start somewhere. If it's trending up by a thousand, two thousand, you know, by the time, as long as it trends up by the end of the year, you know, we're going to be in a really, really good place. So, um, so that's good. Uh, look like the demo target demo is still about the same. That's something that I really got to work on, um, on, on getting up because, you know, you can't, you can't, um, that's where a lot of adver- advertising dollars and stuff are going to come from, uh, you know, the commercials, the ads and everything and, you know, we've talked about this this before. It's why, you know, on Access TV, you got the testosterone pill commercials and things like right. that. You know, like, <laughs> you know, you know. So that that's something that they got to work on. Um, you know, they've. It doesn't seem like we're we're in that time where they're trying to get everyone from ECW on the show and all these old wrestlers. You know, I say that we had an old wrestler in the main event today, but they've seemed okay. to be getting away from that a little bit. So, you know, hopefully that'll help things trend in a good direction in that area. So, but yeah. Viewership up, and it's six straight weeks up in a row. So that's good. That includes the uh, the best of stuff, which I guess viewership was okay for that. I think you said you watched them. I just yeah, I take the the week off from Impact. But well, hold your thought right there. Let me just let me just let me just cut in for one second. You get right back to your thought. I think the interesting thing of 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 mentioning that the best of episodes were part of the increased viewership uh, or the steadily increasing viewership is the fact that these best of episodes really crystallized that Impact Wrestling had an excellent in-ring year in 2021. And I don't think, excuse me, I don't think that can be overstated. Um, it's, it's often understated, right? Because again, like, you know, the biggest thing Impact is fighting is their negative brand perception. And the the, the fact that people actually took a look at those, best of shows and we're like wait a minute impact has some moments this year they had yeah. some really good in-ring moments they had and, it, and they had some moments that people were actually talking about there was some real buzz around impact wrestling at certain times this year it completely dissipated right but at times impact wrestling last year had some real genuine buzz good yeah yeah and um a couple of years ago i shouldn't say a couple of years ago but there was several years ago you couldn't I always thought everything they put in these best of shows was a real stretch. Like there, there was really no, uh, especially like the, you know, the pop TV area, destination America era. Like we, we didn't have a whole lot of just excellent ass matches. I mean, there was, you know, EC3 and rockstar spud and, you know, th- there were some good ass matches, but we had a period of time where it was just like, it was a wrestling show and just nothing. You could go back and be like, yo, I want to watch that match again. So you mentioned the negative, you know, the negative name and everything. I feel like they've really gotten away from, maybe that's not the way to put it. 
I don't think that negativity follows them as much this to this day as it has in the past. And I mean the negative, like, Bischoff and Hogan. Like, that stuff was just casting this black cloud above the company for the longest time. And um, there's still some people, you know, I was in a group the other day where, I, you know, talking about hard to kill. I was like, yo, if you if you sat there and like, I'm going to watch Battle of the Belts tonight instead of this, like you missed a good show. Like, oh, well, right. I've given Impact all these chances. I'm like, yeah, but you probably give, you know, how many chances have you given WWE who consistently right. uh, puts on bad shows? And, you you know, right. next week you're right. You're right back. So it's just not an excuse anymore. But I think a lot of the old negative TNA stuff and the LOL TNA and the Dixie Carter stuff. I, I feel like that's not all um, as relevant right now as it used to be. I think mm-hmm. some of the negative stuff comes from the people who tuned in during the Kenny Omega stuff. And we, we talked about, they weren't necessarily putting their best foot yeah. forward on those episodes. You know, they were, they were just trying to say, okay, well we got Kenny Omega on the show. That's all we need. And then like yeah. the rest of the show wasn't that good at the time. So I think they're see. I I want I want to I want to actually disagree with you a little bit right there. I think that it's not so much that people tuned in for the Kenny Omega stuff because it's not like they didn't have an opinion of impact prior to that, right? I think that where where we are is we. You're right. We are at a generation of people that didn't even watch a lot of the you know uh, TNA Impact on Spike TV. Um, but it's just that Impact Wrestling has been the whipping boy of the internet wrestling community for so long. They just know it's like, again, I, I always think of impact and think of like the, the unpopular kid at school. Like you don't even know why you pick on this kid, but you just know that you can get away with it. Nobody's mm-hmm. going to say, Hey, don't pick on James, you know, because uh, nobody likes James, you know, he's, he's everything wrong. And he's the person we can all feel better about ourselves if we just pick on James. Having a bad day, go kick James. Not having a good, did you fail your math test? Call James stupid. You know what I mean? Like that, that that's impact wrestling. You know what I mean? That's, that's impact wrestling. And like you said, I think a lot of people don't even know why the, uh, they just know that there's this thing that was considered, you know, the worst wrestling. And then when they turn it on and see the poor production values and the mistakes and every article is this person done with TNA. You know what I mean? It, it's like <laughs> that's just the that's the that's just the that's that's the only way they know it. You know what I mean? They only know TNA Impact as James the Whipping Boy. You know, it's so, yeah. <laughs> um, so like so 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 right. So even with like the addition of Kenny Omega, who you know these same people were calling the best wrestler in the world they still could not bring themselves to, you know, to admit they were enjoying impact wrestling. So, you know, so again, I I do think it all comes back to the negative brand perception because people don't know how to like impact wrestling, right? Like impact has to teach fans how to like impact wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. True. I I think if more people saw what they were doing right now, though, it would, things would be very different because what they're doing now is is really, really good. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I totally agree with that. What uh, what 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 else you got? So the viewership is up. That's awesome. Um, you, just like you said, you know, I think that's totally a result out of the you know the positive vibes, the positive buzz that's been going on, especially coming off hard to kill. A lot of great conversation about you know Diana Perazzo, Mickey James, you know her uh, positive buzz about being in the Royal Rumble, and a lot of you know forbidden door conversation going on and all that stuff. So, a lot you know again. A lot of good momentum. And you said, you know, 15,000 people is not the end of the world. But you know what? When you're talking about 2 million people, 15,000 doesn't matter. When you're talking about 100,000 people, 15,000 matters. It matters. That's a significant chunk of, um, of, of, of the viewing audience that you're adding, you know, that you're adding to the people watching. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, like, I think that is, that's a significant jump. And again, you know, Impact has to do something that, WWE does frequently that annoys the people who watch every week, but they present the show for the first time watcher. Like if you watch WWE for the first time tonight, tomorrow night, whenever you're going to get the full rundown on every story that's happening, who the character is, why the thing is happening to them. You're going to know by the time you finish watching. 
And I think Impact needs to kind of make that their goal. They need to say, hey, if, if you're tuning into this show for the first time, we need to make sure you leave with a full understanding of what the situation is and why you need to come back next week. You know, like that's got to be that, that's got to be their approach going forward. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the other thing we're going to talk about here, I was trying to find this article like a, for the life of me. I couldn't find it. People were sending me screenshots and then um, now I can't find anything. But um, I believe it was reported by Sean Ross Sapp that Anthem increased the budget for impact. Uh, would significantly is what it said that it was supposed to go to go towards talent pay and production value. So I think it, I, from what I understood from the little blurb I read, it was talent pay as far as like paying some of the current talent a little bit more. Cause I remember a couple of years ago, they did give a handful of people raises mm-hmm. and then um, probably also to bring new people in as well. Cause it seems like now mm-hmm. they've, you know, they're cycling in quite a few people they could be contracted. They could be doing one-offs, whatever, you know? And I think we're going to see a lot of one-offs going forward. And if they're going to increase the, you know, production value, I think that's a very smart thing. Cause that's something that I've, you know, really gone on record for a long time. Now, a long, long, long time say that the production value is just not good. And there has to be, you know, I haven't enjoyed just the editing of the show and the, you know, the, the music and all that crap. So like, if there's going to be improvements in that, I think that's that's a good thing. Because I made a point, I don't think I did on this podcast, I think it was on a separate upload, I made a point that even though they're they're in the, the, the competition, I think I did say something on this podcast, podcast, even though their competition is the MLWs and NWAs of the world, you know, um, Ring of Honor obviously was was in that category for a while, even though that's their competition, the only wrestling shows on TV are AEW, WWE, NXT, and Impact. And you look at the Impact production value, and it just it's not even close to those other three companies. And it's just like, well, you 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 got to get it there, somewhat. You know, you're not going to get like I think NXT's production value is freaking incredible. I just I watch that. I'm just like, yo, this shit looks great. I think the show which I liked for a couple of weeks. Now I think it kind of sucks, but mm-hmm. the production value is like really, really good. So Impact's not going to get to that point, but there has to be, it can't look like the ring of honors of the world. Right, um, right. If you're on, on TV like this, it, it, it just can't. Um, so I, I really hope that they do put that money towards that because what we've seen in the past, at least from our standpoint as podcasters and fans is that they try to solve issues with the talent like let's let's bring in more talent and then and this guy from here and try to throw money at this mm-hmm. guy and the money never it it seems like they didn't don't feel like there's a return investment return in, in return of investment on production right, value right. and things like that that's just how it has come across like we're going to put our money towards bringing in this guy and this guy and this guy but not towards hey let's make the presentation of the show look and sound better right you know so I hope that they actually do take step forwards, take steps forward doing that because, you know, I really think that, again, you cannot, even though your competition is the NWAs and MLWs, you can't look like them if right. you're trying to be, because you, you're still trying to be that, you know, third company. No, you're right. And I think the thing too is, you know, I feel like if I work for Impact, like I'd be the person behind the scenes banging the drum like, dog, they're not, I don't think Impact is that far off from from an AEW. I don't think they're that far. The biggest differences between Impact and AEW is that AEW knows their audience. They know their audience and they speak to their audience and their audience is, you know, uh, is is irrationally disloyal. You know what I mean? I'm, excuse me, irrationally loyal to uh, to AEW. Uh, blindly loyal. You know what I mean? Just, just, like, just like WWE's audience, right? That's what has them you know, locked into that, to that second spot. But in terms of like, you know, uh, production value and, um, and, and a talent they have access to, like, they're not, listen, WWE literally has a training facility where they are bringing in high quality world-class athletes and turning them into WWE superstars. You're not going to catch that, but what you can do is again, 
You have access to people with good indie followings. Find out who's hot online. You know what I mean? Like, get out there, do that work. You have access to those people. You know, AEW has found themselves in a pickle because they couldn't resist signing up all that released WWE talent. And now all those people that AEW was really excited were all elite about a year ago. Okay. Now they're, you know, tweeting about how upset they are or their wives. Or are, they're wrestling you know? on YouTube. Yeah. They're, right. Or they're wrestling on YouTube. You know what I mean? And so, um, you know, impact has access to that same talent. You know what I mean? So again, like it's, it's about impact just has to, they got to, like you said, increase their production value. It's wild to me if they don't see the value in increasing their production value. Because, again, the whole idea behind everything they do should be let's make people feel like they want to be a part of this. You know, like WWE, again, look at everything they do. I was watching this past week. I got on my Royal Rumble kick. And um, I was watching what I think is probably my favorite old school Royal Rumble, the 1994 Royal Rumble. And I was watching that saying to myself, I was like, man, this is WWE's production value for 1994. And this is miles ahead of what Impact is doing today. There's something wrong with that. Something's wrong with that. If, you're, if WWE show in 1994 was way ahead of what you're doing today, like, something's not right you know what i mean something's not right like there's something y'all got to figure out so and and i just you know started like looking at things like oh okay you know the uh the the mat is mics you can hear the slams you know um you know again every the the music right the the music there's more care taken into the music it's nice and loud so that everybody in the arena can hear it you know even that's when they had the little multi-screen, uh, you know, videotron hanging right over the, the entrance way, you know, like it's just, just those little things still just so far ahead of where the impacts of the world are right now. So, um, so yeah, I mean like production value, duh, like it's, it's very important. You gotta, you gotta make your show something people want to be a part of. Um, I wanted to say two things about production value. One, uh, did you notice how much lower the production value was for the episodes of Impact after Hard to Kill than for Hard to Kill? Like, Hard to Kill was crisp. It sounded clean. It looked very clear. And the episodes of Impact that followed that were right back to the same, you know, l- lower quality video. You know, it felt more dimly lit uh the the sound wasn't as good and i'm like dog this is the same venue it's the same venue um and i I, you know so it had to be the same production crew had to be the same production equipment like how is this one episode this much worse than the pay-per-view you just did the night before like do you have any idea how that happens i don't man it's uh it's really confusing to me so at first what i had said was because what i noticed was a lot of the Impact Plus shows, I call them Impact Plus shows, I don't know what the hell they referred to them to as now, they always sounded crisp. I, dude, I even go back to the one night only shows. They just always sounded crisper. I could just always hear the fans a lot more. And as, you know, like I said, I go all the way back to one night only. I go back to the Impact Plus shows now. I could, I could hear everything. Everything was just like crisp and clear. I don't know what it is. Now, there was a couple shows, the Knockouts Knockdown didn't sound good. And if you don't believe me, com- uh, someone did this the other day. They actually put it in headphones, and then they put it next to Turning Point, and we're like, oh, my God, you know? Mm. Holy shit, that sounds, sounds like crap. Because the, uh, what I was tell- explaining to people, that the, the audio was peaking. Like, it was a, a couple notches mm-hmm. too high. It was going into the red and, and just not sounding good. So... At first, I was like, okay, maybe it's, it's something about the pay-per-view or the monthly, whatever. There, there's something different they're doing. At first, I thought maybe it was just, oh, well, if they're streaming it uh, live, then it's going to sound a certain way compared to them compressing it down and then having to upload it for television. I don't know what the process is. I don't have a effing clue, but I just know that the pay-per-views, the monthly specials, just consistently, and they have for years sounded better than the episodes. Um, 
I don't know what it is, dude. I don't I don't have a effing clue in the world. I thought this yeah, but, but but it's something though. We can obviously we can see it. You know what I mean? Yeah, it, there that's something. And I thought this particular episode sounded okay. I could hear the crowd better than last week. Mm-hmm. And then I don't know if they got a better microphone because when David Penzer was doing the ring announcing, it wasn't it was a lot clearer this week than in the past that I always thought sounded distorted. And I don't know if it was because again the audio video sound levels were peaking like i said or they were just using a piece of crap mic i i don't know but i was i just always and i have i just have an ear for it from years of audio engineering Mm -hmm. i I just have an ear for it so a lot of people maybe don't hear that i hear it like super clear when something's distorted you know right but i thought this week sounded a little bit better but there's a clear difference between whatever they do on a monthly basis as as far as a big show and the the TV show, it's it's yeah. clear they're doing so- something is different. I wonder if it's a thing where they have more bandwidth to like to export the show uh, on on like a pay per view format than if they do for like YouTube. Um, because like I know when I'm uploading videos YouTube, I pick the lowest possible quality because I'm like it's on YouTube. Like you're not watching this for you know HD clarity or whatever. You know, like who cares. Mm-hmm. Um, and maybe that's the same thing they do. Maybe, you know, for pay-per-view, maybe they're like, oh, you know, people are paying money for this. Um, you know, we'll just, we'll, we'll, we'll make sure it looks as good as possible. But again, to me, I, you know, they say how you do, how you do anything is how you do everything, you know? And so like, again, for that person that's checking out impact for the first time and just getting this episode on a random Thursday night or whatever, you want to you want to put your best foot forward you know what i mean so i don't see why i why it would be okay to say ah we're just gonna have you know a crappy look on on this you know weekly show yeah um, I, I agree with you i think there's something about the bandwidth that when they export it down to a certain file i do the same thing when i upload this if i were to upload the high quality version of this it would take hours to upload right so right. i have to do a lower quality and it does affect the audio so i have right, to believe right. it's something like that but you know, but you're right. It's, um, I, I don't know when you're in their yeah, position, yeah. I don't think you can slack or take steps backwards. I think you just exactly. have to put your best foot, foot forward at all times because exactly. go back to what I just said. The other wrestling shows on TV don't look and sound like that. So you, you just have to put your best foot forward. You're not going to get to that level, but you can't, you can't slack in that area. hundred percent. Hundred percent. The other thing about production <clears throat> that I wanted to say, um, you guys know, uh, you know, Lewis Carlin, who you know used to be formerly of the Impact Lounge, still does the Shoot Up North podcast, and BQ referenced this I think last week. Um, Lewis did an interview with Josh Matthews, which you can check out on uh, the was it Alliance Pro Wrestling Network. Go so mm-hmm. check that out on his YouTube channel. And I really enjoyed the interview. It was like you know I think seventeen minutes or something like that. And um, it was actually really, you know, refreshing to hear Josh Matthews talk about, you know, getting a chance to be the producer of the show and in being the producer of the show, you know, trying to correct some things that have been mistakes for years. And honestly, sometimes like hearing stuff just colors the way you see stuff. And it made me notice more of the things that Impact is doing right from a production standpoint and they are getting rid of some of like the, you know, previous mistakes and, 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 and that type of thing. And like you mentioned before, like with lady frost entrance, uh, just trying, just trying some things, right? Like, you know, uh, again, this goes back to what I was saying about watching the Royal rumble from a few years ago, how every entrance was just, there was more dedicated production value to each entrance entrance and make each person have their own special feel in some kind of way and um i don't know man i gotta say like i just i know knowing that josh matthews is somebody who has you know think about this josh matthews was on tough enough in 1998 something like that Mm -hmm. right like that was 2008 2018 you know like that's that's 20 24 years at this point like this man spent half of his life in the wrestling business. You know what I mean? Like, I, I think at this point we can say Josh Matthews is somebody who we can trust um, from a production standpoint, as far as someone who knows wrestling, right? Like, you know, there's this, 
hierarchy of, you know, the Jim Cornettes of the world who think only the people who are in the territory business, you know, no wrestling, you know what I mean? But like, <laughs> at this point, you gotta, you gotta sit back and take stock of what we're looking at here. And again, you know, for whatever you think of Josh Matthews as a wrestler, for whatever you think of him as a commentator, you know, whatever, right? Like, He's somebody who's been around the rec- wrestling business, which, by the way, I have to tell everybody, is a show. It's show business. He's been around this particular type of show business, the production of this particular type of show business in the public eye for something like 24 years now. I just did that math off the top of my head. I don't know if that's correct. But uh, but it's been a long time, right? So I said all that, said all that, that to say that I think we can trust Josh Matthews when he says that he's trying to make the show look better you know what I mean because Mm. he's somebody who's been he's seen a lot of people try it and he's seen it done at the highest level you know what I mean he's seen it done at the highest level and he has we have literally seen him working his way up through the business in the organizations you know what i mean and it's funny because he'll probably go back to wwe one day when uh you know like once once he gets his skills up and impact you know and they have an opening another mass firing in wwe he'll probably go back over there as a producer but in the meantime right in the meantime i think that we're going to continue to see um the the production values of impact uh increase and one thing i noticed in particular was they lit the crowd. They lit the crowd at Hard to Kill. They lit the crowd at these past Impact tapings. And they lit the crowd regardless of what the size of the crowd was. And I love that. You know why I love that? Because it's true to the fan. Listen, I watched the episode of AEW. I think it was last week and they were in Raleigh. And they had the stands all blacked out. Blacked out, yeah. Listen, there is not a more glaring... You would have been better off putting a flashing neon sign that said nobody is here. Yeah. You would have been better off doing that than 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 darkening the seats in the audience because ever since you've been on TV, all you've been showing us is all the fans, the you know, a- everywhere, you know, everyone you're know, cheering and just showing us how much fans you got. Um and so to 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 do a show with the stands blacked out like all you were just you were you were you could not have pointed any louder and longer to say there's nobody here and for every wrestling show when you black out the stands the fans at home think there's nobody here so even if you have a a a, a smattering of a crowd like listen there's ways you can produce around that put the camera on one side put the fans on the other side wwe's been doing this for years tna was doing this for years okay like but Light the audience, man. Light the crowd. Again, the people at home need to see that there's people in the stands clapping, cheering, yelling, having a good time. They need to see that. They need to see it. You can put in all the fake crowd noise you want to, but the people at home, they're going to believe what they see with their eyes. So lighting the crowd, I love that. Even though, again, it wasn't like jam-packed to the rafters, but like let people see that there are people there. They're real people. They're clapping. They're enjoying. They look however they look like, whatever, but they're real people there. So that's something that I really love that Josh Matthews did. And listen, I mean, uh, as critical as I am of Impact Wrestling, like I got to give them their flowers when they do something right. And I think Mm -hmm. that I, 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 I think... You know, I think that the, the the future is positive with Josh Matthews in the production chair. Yeah, and I wouldn't have said that in the past. Uh, and the reason I, I say that is because I felt that there were so many changes necessary to have a better wrestling show. There was one point where I was like, well, you, you have to bring in new people. You, you just have to. Like, if you bring in, if you just have the same people in the same places or the same people uh, being promoted up a spot, the ideas are still the same at the end of the day, and it's going to still look and feel the, the same. You know, I was, I was, I've, oh, I, I had said for a long time, like, uh, until you get Josh Matthews out of the booth, it doesn't matter what you do, it's still TNA. It's, you, you know what I mean? So, even though I had that mindset in the past, now I feel like, you know what? No, after I heard that interview with him, I was like, he's, 
he sounds pretty dedicated to making the show different, you yeah. know, and that, that's all I really wanted. And he's the last person I would have said that because, yeah. you know, this was a dude that when he was doing commentary, like his, I mean, easier said than done. You can say the same about myself, but his vocabulary never changed. There was just, it was right. just always like, it got so stale cause you just heard everything described the same exact way for the longest yeah. time. Yeah. And it just, I, for me, I was like that his, mind doesn't expand enough for what the company needs but now i'm you know after hearing the interview i would say he's he's pretty dedicated to that yeah. pr producer spot so and let, uh, let me add one more thing here i think like um guys i think we were talking about this before we got on the air we were talking about how you know nxt 2.0 just basically looks like what'd you say I said it looks like Raw with a bunch of nobodies. Yes, that Raw with a bunch of nobodies. And remember how I told you why it looks like that? Because the person who's producing it, it's probably Bruce Pritchard, and he and he has a format for Monday Night Raw. He just goes in and deletes the, the name Monday Night Raw, inserts NXT. He deletes the name of the person in the first segment of Raw, inserts the name of somebody from mm -hmm. NXT. D down the line, it is Monday Night Raw with nobodies. You know what I mean? It is the same thing. And so that's an example of producing going through the motions. And Josh Matthews, like you said, appears to be passionate about producing impact wrestling, about mm -hmm. making his mark as a producer in the wrestling business. And I can't tell you how valuable it is because producing is a thankless job. You know what I mean? Like, like uh, we, we will all sit there and marvel at how amazing Lady Frost, uh, her, her, her moonsault looks, but nobody's going to sit and talk about, you know, getting the perfect camera angle to show, you know, the way she rotates and just goes over absolutely perfectly. Like nobody, nobody talks about the producing and, and, you know, and the directing, like, you know, people, people don't talk about that type of thing. So producing is a thankless job. So having a passion to produce a show. Well, I'm telling you, man, like you, you can't buy that. You can't buy that. You can pay people lots of money, but you can't buy somebody really being truly dedicated to having a vision for how they want your product to look and to have passion for how it is executed. You know what I mean? I'm a TV producer, okay? And I can tell you that having passion for how something looks because it has your name on it is the total opposite of going through the motions. And like I said, deleting the things out of one rundown and just replacing them with the, the current days, you know, or the current shows names and, and segments. Like, um, so I just wanted to say that to everybody, you know, who's listening in, in impact wrestling world, like we've given Josh Matthews a lot of shit, you know what I mean? <laughs> like yeah. uh, some of it, some of it earned, you know, like with the Jim Ross comments and, and that type of stuff, you know what I mean? Like he brought some of that stuff on himself. Um, but, I think, I think, so the, the number one thing Impact Wrestling needs is people who are passionate about making the show look good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because it helps everybody out. It helps out their own brand. You know what I mean? Like it helps out the company, yada, yada, yada. And I believe that Josh Matthews is passionate about making Impact Wrestling look good. And so mm -hmm. again, I'm telling you, man, like that I think is an invaluable resource and so um, that's something that we should all be, you know, uh, encouraged about going forward. Because like I said, I think that from a production standpoint, I think the show is in good hands. And people, you know, I got, I got a tweet the other day and I get him every so often. People are like, oh, I know you hate Josh Matthews. I have never hated. I love Josh Matthews. I just didn't like the, the, the way the commentary was trending. That was, that was just my, my biggest thing. You know, on Pop TV, I thought he actually sounded pretty good. He always had a lot of fire in his voice, and he, he kind of had a deeper voice, and I think he was, was saying he used to lose his voice, and I think he got away from having that fire to preserve his voice for the tapings. But when that happened, it, it just started going like downhill real bad, and then it was, you know, they were, were talking about anything other than the match that was going on in, in front of us. That's where I started getting, like, frustrated. But I've never, like, disliked... Him. And he's a definitely an asset to the company. Like he, they, not having him would be a bigger loss than, you know, when Jeremy Borash left and everyone lost their mind. Like, oh, he, he does right, so much. Right. Like Josh probably does more than Borash did, you yeah, know. So, yeah, yeah, hell yeah.
Hell yeah. All right, man. You ready to dive into this week's episode of Impact? Yeah, man. Another, another very, very good show. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, and w- You know what? This is actually going to lead me to, uh, to a point. I just want to jot it down here. And then we're going to get into this real quick. I just want to jot down this point so we come back to it. Uh... All right. For those looking at us, I'll just do a little dance number, <laughs> a little, little routine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Us, sorry, uh, sorry for the dead air. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a production no-no. Dead air. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, uh, so here we go. Um, oh, we had Jordan Grace versus uh, Lady Frost for Digital Media Championship. Uh, of course, Jordan Grace won. I didn't even watch, but the uh, I'm actually going to go back and watch that match because I'm a big Lady Frost fan. Um, and after the match, though, Matt Cardona confronted Jordan Grace and pointed to the Digital Media Championship. So we're going to get Matt Cardona versus Jordan Grace for the Digital Media Championship. BQ, what do you think about this? So it's so funny because I just uploaded a podcast earlier that day talking about my five predictions for 2022. One of them, the very first one I said was that they were going to phase out the Digital Media Championship by the end of the year. I said, because the wrestlers don't care, the fans don't care, the company comes off like they don't care, and that it's a prop championship, it's not a mid-card title, it's a lower-card title, and that if once Jordan Grace loses it, I said that's probably the biggest star they're going to have with the title, and once she loses it, it's just going to go downwards. And I also, But I also said, if they didn't take action on this title by, I gave it to the end of February, if they didn't take any real action to make that championship mean something that they weren't going to be able to come back from it and it's funny like the exact time i stack exact day that i upload it the exact person that needs to wrestle for that championship came into the picture and these are the little improvements we talk about like tying bti into the show and now bti is half an hour it should have only ever been half an hour because there's the match is the only thing that i ever cared about in that show the rest was complete fucking fluff. And now that they have um, New Japan, you know, I guess they're just focusing on BTI being at half an hour. And I think it's on YouTube now. I don't even think it's on Access TV really? at all. Oh. I, be- I believe so. So they tied a- BTI in- into, into the show. They ran an angle on BTI that actually means something. And that's exactly what I really wanted to see for the for the title for for the way they're going to use their digital space that's what i wanted to see so i'm uh, it looks like they they've got a you know big match they're gonna and a big angle they're gonna work towards here with cardona he's probably gonna win the title that's probably mm-hmm. gonna be where the heel turn thing happens i have to believe there's no way white me baby face cardona is holding that belt there's no there's that's true. They, they, <laughs> that's so true. disconnected from what needs <laughs> from what the wrestling fans want if they were to do that. So I, I think it's going to be, you know, heel Cardona with the belt. And I, I'm kind of excited about it to see what direction they take it and to see the the change in Cardona that we're expecting. And, and if him holding this belt is going to make it mean something because that was the part that I really, really strongly meant that if over the next, by the end of February, if they didn't, didn't make that title mean something or at least – act like they cared that it was going to be dead in the water. Yeah, you know, yeah. there was a point with the the grand championship where I, I liked it in the beginning more than most people did, mm-hmm. but it did get to a point where it was, it was officially a prop. Right. And at that point, people were like, please just get rid of it. If it's going to be a prop. And you know, that's, that's what I felt with this belt. And now they're running an angle with it. So I'm excited. Yeah, so uh, with the Grand Championship, they they killed the Grand Championship for me by having all the Grand Championship matches be so predictable. Um, it was like, like there'd be matches where, you know, like every match would come down to, you know, it's tied one-to-one and let's right. go into the last segment. It's like, dog, like, that you you just you're 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 killing it every time like it's the same thing every time and the what made it so bad is there would be times when the round would get awarded to somebody who clearly wasn't being the aggressor 
wasn't right. getting the best of the other person, and it just had to score it like one to one. So that's how the segment had to play out. And I was just, you know, that, that's how they killed the grand championship for me. Um, and then when EC3 got it, and he clearly was just like, you know, he wanted no parts of it and had one foot out the door. And I was like, man, like, could you make this whole thing look any worse? So yes, you're right. Uh, the the person holding it makes the title a lot. Um, that said, I think you're 100 percent right with everything you said. You know, I think this is a awesome opportunity for Matt Cardona to do his heel turn. Uh, Cardona and Chelsea Green, you know, are on the indies. They work heel when they're on the indies. And it's perfect, by the way. It's so good because everybody still knows him as Zack Ryder. And it's almost like the, the Bob Saget thing, rest in peace, you know, of the the shock of when you see Bob Saget stand up, and you're like, oh, that's not Danny Tanner. You know what I mean? And so like, right. you know, with, with, with Matt Cardona, you know, he, he comes out, he's like, oh, that's Zack Ryder, you know, Chelsea Green, you know, the, you know, cute, smiling, you know, cheerleader type of sidekick, you know, presentation wise, right? And then he gets on the mic, and he's just healing on everybody, talking wild, crazy-ish, you know what I mean? And, and, and Chelsea Green, you know, like, listen, can I, can I just say about Chelsea Green, I mean this, respectfully she has a very sexy way about her you know what i mean it's like yeah, oh yeah. it's just this it's like it's her it's her personality you know what i mean like she just presents very confidently like oh man you know what uh, uh, you know so anyway but uh, but, it, but it's a great presentation you know what i mean it's like that it's that it's it's that the the um you know it's it's like the tough guy and the 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 badass chick you know what i mean like that's how they present on the indies and i love it i think that'd be a great act for impact wrestling jordan grace actually defended the impact digital media championship at terminus which was uh jonathan gresham's event which that's was right. this past weekend in atlanta um it was a solid show if you guys haven't seen it, you can probably check it out on fight tv um but um she defended the digital media championship there. And so, you know, uh, Matt Cardona. It was against, wasn't it against uh, 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 Kiera Hogan. Hogan? Yeah, Kiera Hogan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so, uh, so, so, so I can see Zack Ryder and Chelsea Green taking that Impact Digital Media Championship all over the Indies and defending it. And if, you know, if, if Impact can find a way to work it out so that that becomes content for Impact's YouTube channel, that'd be great for Impact. Um, I, you know, I know this is always too much to ask, but I feel like Jordan Grace, with her great social media presence, uh, and, you know, Matt Cardona, with his really good social media presence, if you take a couple of weeks, you could really build this match. You could really build this match and do it on YouTube. Do it on YouTube. See how many views you can get up for that. I think, man, if they just take their time with this, this can be something fun that grows impacts digital. You know what I mean? And just, again, you just got to put something people actually want to see on digital. And people will go, like, you know, I say this all the time. People are like, oh, I can't find uh, Access TV. You need a, uh, a jailbroken fire stick and, and, and two shoelaces rubbed together with tinfoil. <laughs> like, uh, but, but you know what? If SmackDown moved to Access TV, that shit would still do a million, two million views. Uh -huh. People would find it. People would find it. Okay. So, um, so yeah, man, like I, I think Impact just has to go out of your way. Like you mentioned before, like with the uh, final deletion, right? They did an amazing marketing campaign around the final deletion. And you know what oh, yeah. was, I think, Ooh. the most affecting thing they did, effective thing they did in marketing the final deletion was they, they posted the videos of well-known people watching and reacting to it okay like so do something like that man Genius. yes yes get, get get people you know get the you know um you know matt hardy or you know anybody get all all types of people people well-known critics uh dave Meltzer, sean ross sap you know i mean get those people to talk about like you know what they think it means for you know Jordan Grace and 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 Matt Cardona to be going one on one for digital media championship. Like, listen, like create some buzz, and then you put it out there on YouTube. Watch how many views it gets, man. Like, I'm telling you, man. Like, I'm giving away free money right here. But <laughs> they probably won't do that. They probably won't do that. 
what they'll probably do, they'll probably just throw the match up on BTI next week with very little fanfare and, you know, whatever. Or they'll put it on, um, you know, they'll put it on, on, or stick it somewhere in the middle of episode and impact. And, you know, it is what it is. Uh, but yeah, I think there's a lot of great potential. There's a lot of great potential in this matchup and uh, potential for growth, right? For, for the impact brand. You know what I think would be interesting is no, no wrestling company does anything like this, but let's just say Jordan Grace live streams on Instagram and it comes across like, Hey, what's up guys? You know, I'm just here. I'm at the gym. I'm doing just something where it's not a wrestling promo. It's not, it's just her sounding 100% natural. Maybe she's at her home and Matt Cardona attacks her on the live stream. Oh you, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> so where it's not again, not wrestling promo where she's talking about wrestling. Like she's talking about her her diet and her just the same the shit people do when they live stream. And then you you build an angle like within that to where it comes across like it's almost real. You know what I mean? Right. And even if the camera like cut out right after that, like She's sitting there talking about going green and making a smoothie or something. All of a sudden, right. comes, takes her out and the stream cuts out. Like people would fucking talk about that because it's just it's just different. It's you know, so in this digital space, there is so much that they could do if they're willing to be different. But we're just not seeing that yet. Right. Exactly. Um, by the way, uh, I know people who will do this for you for the right price. Okay. <laughs> um, so. We had Tasha Stills with Savannah Evans versus Chelsea Green. Knockouts world champion Mickey James joined Tom Hannafin on commentary as D'Lo Brown is still recovering from last week's attack at the hands of the Ring of Honor Renegades. After winning the first ever Knockouts Ultimate X match, Tasha Stills is the number one contender for the Knockouts world title. Chelsea Green hit a curb stomp on Tasha Stills on the apron. Stills countered uh, the unprettier into a cold breaker for two. Stills connected with a vicious cutter for another near fall. Then Green hit a top rope crossbody, but Tasha Stills rolled through. Stills put Green away with the crucifix bomb. Tasha Stills got the one, two, three over Chelsea Green. After the match, Tasha Stills sent a warning to Mickey James. She grabbed the microphone and, you know, she, she talks about Mickey's family and, you know, she gets Mickey to come into the ring and confront her. And of course, a brawl breaks out with Stills and Evans gaining upper hand. Then Chelsea Green makes the save, allowing Mickey to send Tasha running away after a Mick kick. What do you think about this whole segment right here? I, so I enjoy this match a lot. I thought it was a good way to kick off the show. It was a match I cared about. There's a lot of times where we watch the episode and there's a match and I say, I just didn't care. I say that quite a bit. I actually cared about this. I wanted to see these two girls wrestle. Um, you know, Chelsea is not winning right now, and I think that's going to help in this eventual heel turn thing. I think I think she's at the end of a babyface run, just like Cardona is. So why not just have her put people over in the meantime? So I, I think they're doing good with that. But it was a good match. I still believe that Unprettier is going to hurt somebody one day uh, the way that she does it. All I could, did you ever see? I don't remember if I've asked you this before. The uh, the video of Marty Jannetty doing the rocker dropper on a on a jobber, mm -hmm. and he paralyzed him. Mm -hmm. I that's what I see with this move, man. Like, obviously, I'm not a wrestler. She knows a lot more about that move than I do. But the way that she jumps in the air scares me every time. I was like, someone mm -hmm. someone's gonna get hurt one day. I just I just feel like it is, but you know, hopefully hopefully not. It's actually a move that I like when it's just like the way Christian Cage does it. I like it like that. I just, the jump scares me. Um, I thought the crucifix bomb, I like the crucifix bomb. That's actually a move I actually kind of like that I've always felt was a good way to win matches with and no one ever seems to win with it. I don't know if that's going to become a new finisher for her because she was doing the frog splash, which I didn't care about. I didn't care for. And, you know, obviously one of my kicks has been the impact finishers. And, mm -hmm. you know, the top rope splash, uh, you know, she was doing a top rope splash. Uh, Willie Mack does it. Uh, you know, Jonah does it. And I'm pretty sure if I look at the roster, there's probably one other person who does. So I didn't like her doing the frog, frog splash thing. She was also doing the cutter. You know how I feel about the cutter. Lots of people use a cutter. So I don't know if this is something new for her. 
Uh, but but I, but it's a move I dig, and um, we'll see if she uses that going forward. I thought the promo afterwards started off really good. I thought it was a little long, and I I stopped buying it at the end when she started bringing the family in because it just sounded like it just sounded. It was like, okay, we know where you're going. We're trying to bait her into the ring. Yeah, and it was just kind of been here, done that type of shit. And she's, you know, your kid, ha ha, you know, fake laugh. And it's just, and then Mickey James was supposed to be like irate from it when it, it really mm-hmm. wasn't delivered in a sense that Mickey James should have been like that hot about it. Mm. Um, and then the angle after, they love to get. I, I said this a couple of weeks ago. They love to ha- to have wrestlers get their hands on each other, like before yeah. big mm-hmm. matches. That's I'm always a big fan of not doing that, but really over the past, and they've they've been okay with it in the past, but really over the past like year, they have been these motherfuckers are gonna fight like 50 times before the pay per view, maybe yeah, not man. in the ring, but there's gonna be brawls or something like they just they just like to do that, and so in that post match angle, I was kind of like eh, I'm not really into this, and then Chelsea Green showed up, which just told me that. We're probably going to get a knockouts tag match here pretty soon between the yeah. two sides. And then in that case, Mickey and Tasha are going to wrestle, you know, so I don't know. I, I would just, I just like to see them have space between each other, you yeah. know? I mean, it's tough because the difference in like WWE, you know, WWE is a touring company. So if we're getting, you know, let's say, uh Sasha Banks versus Bianca Belair at WrestleMania like you know they're gonna work a bunch of times together on the house shows to prep their WrestleMania match you know what I'm saying yeah yeah. so like in Impact they don't really have that same luxury of like making sure that people get a chance to work together so you know I think there's that aspect to it which is very important you need these guys to get chemistry together so they can put together a good match so you do want to try to get them in the ring together but ideally you know you just don't want it to be on tv because again it it kills the intrigue of the fan like they don't have to say what if you know they don't have to say what if these two people got in the ring because we're seeing them in the ring you know (laughs) right um all right so Matt Cardona had an interview backstage with Gia Miller where he basically confirmed what we just talked about, that he's going to be challenging Jordan Grace for the digital media championship. He basically said that he invented the web championship. And so uh, he's, (laughs) you know, coming to claim that back. All right. Then we had the influence uh, versus decay. Uh, you know, come on, guys. Listen, you know, you you know, decay don't win shit. You know what I'm saying? Decay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the influence beat the de- de- beat decay. We don't got to go to the to the uh, to the details. Um, but actually, something that was interesting here is they did an injury angle for Rosemary before the match started. Um, they act like she got she got hurt. And she came out wearing a jacket and uh, she was like thrown down or something. But she wanted to let Havoc still do the match by herself. So that was weird. Rosemary's obviously hurt and she can't wrestle right now. So that was interesting. Yeah, um, she, she must be because what they did to her to take her out is no different than you would do in a match. Right. And they were basically like, you can't compete, you know? So right. it, it's a thing is if the influence is wrestling for the, the belts, like they need a definitive win. Like they haven't been beating anybody up to this point. And then now that you're having them win a match, it's, not a definitive win. I'd like the finish of the match. So I, I bought it, you know, it, it was, um, I don't remember what the first move was, but then, uh, to Neil Dashwood hits her finisher and then they hit their tag team finisher, which I like, I like that move. Um, remember the head shrinkers used to use it back in the day, but Mm -hmm. I bought the finish. And then did you see the picture on social media of, of, uh, they're laying on the ground with her. Caleb is, you know, taking the picture and the influence is both I like no. posing. And then I'm going to send it to you. And then oh, man, like, really? her face is just like, not <laughs> that shit is so funny, man. Oh. Um, I didn't, they had the, the inspiration to do the promo after and they try to, mm. you know, clearly it's pre pre tapes, but they play it. Like they just finished watching the match, you know, like, Oh, right. two on one, good job. You know, how are they watching the match? You know, yeah, it kind of right. makes sense, it's whatever. It's a small detail. Um, so yeah, Decay don't beat nobody. I, I, it's, it's funny. Did you see the episode of AEW last week where they took Darby Allen out before the match? Like they wrapped the, the uh, yeah, chair around yeah. his neck and threw him into the, mm-hmm. 
it looked like, like it was an angle where he, you, you would be worried he broke his neck or something. Like, for those of you who didn't see, he has a, the chair wrapped around his neck, and then they threw him into the post and, you know, hit him in the neck, all this shit. So they were like, you can't compete this match. So Sting has to wrestle by himself. And then, like, ten minutes, not even that long, five minutes later, Darby Allen comes back, no selling, and just gets into the match. Right. Like, you know. He don't sell I, anyway. <laughs> he don't sell. <laughs> he, he, he don't sell nothing. <laughs> I'm only bringing that up because it was just so ridiculous. You know, right. people think I complain about Impact. If I were to do an AEW show, I complain <laughs> about that shit way more. Uh... I think things they do good, they do really, really good. But the things that they don't do good, they do like really, really bad. You can tell me off air what the things are. They do good. We can talk about yeah. that later. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so uh, we had a little a little segment backstage where Ace Austin and Madman Fulton run up on uh, Speedball Bailey in the locker room. And basically Ace Austin tries to convince Speedball Bailey that they should be friends. So like a little veiled threat going on right there. Um Next, we had the Learning Tree, Zicky Dice and VSK uh, going against W. Morrissey. So, you guys can pretty much guess how this went. W. Morrissey beat the shit out of both of them. <laughs> and both of them. Yeah, you know, so he, he beat both of those guys. Then Morrissey gets on the mic and sends a warning to Impact World Champion Moose. Morrissey claims that he won't stop his passive destruction until he gets what he wants, a shot at the Impact World Championship. Then he says, he tells Moose to come on out. And he says, Moose, if you're not going to come find me, I'm going to come find you. And as he walks back through the curtain, who else is there? Da, 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 Scott Moore. <laughs> Star of the show. Yes, he stops Morrissey in the hallway and tells him that he's going to get his shot against Moose on Saturday, Saturday February 19th on Impact Plus. And for those of you in New Orleans... For those of you in New Orleans, you get to see Moose versus Morrissey up close and personal. So, uh, so they made they made the match. And what'd you think about this? So it's funny because then now we have confirmation the headset actually works because they're That's like true. they're trying to contact you on the headset. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. The, um, so before this though, the, uh, we we got as much as I miss Josh Matthews talking over Wheel in the Night. Um, this was something kind of different. He was backstage. It came off like the old Mean Gene Okerlund videos. The the here's your WWF report and and just that yes. they yes yeah. I did like that by the way I yeah. loved it. So I would I would I think it's a good spot for Josh if they were to do that going forward. I don't know what they would do with that. Um, in the past, I would say run down the Impact Plus show card because they didn't used to factor that into the television show. Now mm -hmm. they do, so I don't know what they could do. They, but could, just, they like... could just promote. They could promote live events. Promote live yeah, events. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Promote live events. It could be you know it could promote like um, promote signings. Promote uh, you know shows. You know what I mean. Promote like anything. Like I think promote. that's a great idea. Yeah, promote the uh, digital exclusive match that they just put up on YouTube. You know, just yeah. something. You know, but. It was a nice break. Uh, it was just something different. But again, it was Josh over wheel in the night. And, dude, I wrote here in my notes, this King's daughter, like, they showed a video. I just wrote, WTF. <laughs> that shit looks horrible to me, dude. The other, the other movie they showed last time looked okay. This, I'm just like, what is this? Here, it has Pierce Brosnan in it, so I'm just like, well, they got a big name in it, you know, but... That was my biggest question. Like, how did they get Pierce Brosnan? Like, is Pierce Brosnan hard up for money? Like, how did he get end up in this? Like, did he lose a bet to somebody? Is the director of this Pierce Brosnan's daughter? I mean, like, I he owed know. someone a favor. Yeah, they're right. cashed in. Uh, yeah, remember back was in '94, uh, we made a. You said you owed me one. Right. Is it? Is yeah. this like the um the what the loser of his fantasy football league had to do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah. Uh, this one looks bad. I'm just like, yo, I don't, I don't know about this one. Uh, but you know, maybe it's some people's cup. Maybe it's just not my cup of tea, you know. But um, it looks. But I thought it was a good touch that they're promoting the sh the movie on there. It's not just like, hey, the king's daughter. Like they're actually showing clips. Like that's how you do it. Don't just promote the name. Like promote, you know, show us something. So, you know, props for that. I'm just saying it doesn't look very good. But, uh, you know, 
as I said last week, these are legit movies. They're not, you know, B movies, C movies. You know, it's not American Pie brought to you by American Pie Bandcamp Nine. Right. So, <laughs> so yeah. it's like Stippler's, you know, second cousin is the star of the show. You know what I mean? So well, they, know, they pass down the uh, the legendary flute. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you know, they're, they're legit movies, man. But I, I just wrote what the. So and then also they had the quintessential diva teaser before this who. You know, for those who follow anything on the indies, like, you know, that's Giselle Shaw. She's been on my short list of people I wanted to see join the knockouts division. And you don't know how many times over the last couple of years I've been trying to do content of like the five or 10 women I like to see in the knockouts division. And I just never have the time to put the content together. But she was uh, she was on my short list. I've always felt like she was real good. She was in women, women of wrestling. She did one match with Tessa Blanchard on a one night only show uh, back in the day. I say back in the day. It was like three years ago. But she's really good. I think she's very sexy too. So, um, and, and she adds something different to the division. Like when I look at Jade Cargo, for instance, like, and you could think, oh, she can't wrestle. But I look at her, I'm like, yo, that's a, a star. Like that's how I just visually, you know what I mean? Like I feel like. Giselle has has a has a more of a star quality look about her. Just her, her her just the way she's built, I guess. I'm not saying she's buff, but I'm just saying her just the way she looks to me. Like I just always liked her 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 look and the way she carried herself. She has a badass finisher too, which is really really needed in this mm-hmm. company. It's like she jumps off the top rope and she she twirls around. I don't know how how she does it so many times. Uh, and then she does, she'll do a big splash ultimately, but I mean, it's like a, you know, like a corkscrew just like jumps off the top, spins several times. It's, I don't know how she does it, uh, but it's, it's very badass. And I posted a clip of her moves on YouTube, on a Twitter, like a YouTube link. And like, she's, she's got great offense. And um, I just think she has a good look for like being one of the main chicks of the company. So, you know, main chick, not a side chick. What's that? Main chick, not a side chick. <laughs> yep, definitely not. She's uh, she's Filipina too, so it's just something very different, like just a different okay. look, you know. But yeah, she's, I don't, I don't know anything about her. I've never seen her, but um, I'm very, you know, I'm very open to, you know, introduce me to a new character, right? Like, show me something I haven't seen before. Introduce me to a character, like this speedball Mike Bailey. Man, like, I, I, he when he first came out, he was definitely giving me like Ricky the Dragon Steamboat vibes. Yeah, um, but like, uh, but I, but I love his offense. You know what I mean? I love his offense. It's like dope to see. It's refreshing. And so, yes, give me more of that. There's a lot of talent out there that nobody, not nobody, but the world at large has not seen before. The impact has an opportunity to put in front of the world for the first time. So they should go find those people and put them in front of the world for the first time. Yeah, I would say physically, she kind of, I feel like she kind of has the body of like uh, Chelsea Green a little bit where that's why I'm saying Chelsea Green looks like a star to me. She just has a has a look about her, uh, you know, her frame and everything. So that, that's kind of what I get from Giselle Shaw too. But, um, you know, to go back to the the Morrissey thing, he's clearly a babyface now, or he's going that direction. He's probably one of the best parts of the show at this point, in my opinion. I mean, as far as organically getting over and for his size, he's putting on good matches. And a couple weeks ago, I had said, I do think to be different, Impact should lean into having a legitimate heavyweight division. That's not necessarily the hottest style of wrestling right now, but nobody's doing that. No one's leaning into the larger than life characters. Uh, And I mean, physically, I don't mean come out dressed like a plumber and, you know, (laughs) larger than life physically. Like no one's leaning into, you know, the Moose, Fulton, Jonah. Uh, these guys like big dudes, you know. Yeah. So you know, I think they should lean into that, and I think Morrissey's one of the better parts of the show right now. It's disappointing because I actually thought this should be the main event for Rebellion, but maybe they just maybe it's too far off to get there with this uh, because I really want to see Moose and Josh at Slammiversary. I don't know if they can drag it out that far, but that's when I want to see it. Um, but they're doing a great job with Morrissey. And 
he had he had the match at this point, right? He actually did the handicap mm-hmm. match. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep, so the match. The learning tree. I said this last week. They they got so uninteresting like really fast when they had yeah. Sam Beal. He was the learning tree. He was the group. He was the he's what made it interesting and fun. And he had the notepad and uh, was was taking the notes like that. He was the learning tree. Like this group is not the learning tree. You, you're. Yeah. Talking about Zicky Dice, who was like the last addition to the group. VSK, who you were trying to say for a while, is the well-tuned student. And now they're trying to pawn him off as, well, he's learning also, which that wasn't how he was, prevent- how he was presented mm-hmm. initially. It just doesn't work. Like, they're just, they're just jobbers, and that's, there's nothing interesting right. or fun about it anymore. Like, Sam Beal's doing nothing. Why right. even bring him away from the group? And I was actually I- talking with – what's up? No, I was going to say, I-, I thought that the learning tree had an opportunity to be two things – one uh goons for for uh for Brian Myers to actually Brian do Myers, yes. Yeah. yes goons like his version of the edgeheads right yes. like that was that that's what I thought it was going to be and the other thing was a vehicle for um for for Sam Beal to grow and get over right like uh, like again if you do we've seen the Miz do this time and time again you get a person, you treat them like crap on, you know, on TV and they get over with the crowd. We saw Maria Canellas do this with Ali. Like this is a, it's a tried and true formula and it works, but you know, I don't know if they're having some sort of contract issue with Sam Bill, but uh, they look to be in a good place with that. And now, right. They're very much not like, I don't, I have no idea what this thing is. Like those guys, they're not functioning as quality goons for Brian Myers. Mm-hmm. Cause Brian Myers isn't doing anything. And so, right. um, yeah, like you know, I, I I'm not sure exactly what this is right now. I actually had a chat with Manny Lemons uh, a couple days ago, so he was in the learning tree for a little while, and then they cut him. And I, I guess kind of the what I got from him is I think he felt he was saying stuff without saying stuff because you know he don't know me. But I think he was under the impression it was going to be him and Beal, and that was going to be the learning tree. And then they brought in VSK, which he said, I understand because VSK is like his real student. So they want, yeah. you know, Brian Myers is going to help get him on. So he goes, he's like, I understood that. But from my small conversation with him, he didn't understand why he was cut. Like, I think he expected to be a part of that going forward. He's supposed to be at the next, he said he's at the next set of impact taping. So how they use him, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, but it just seemed like the initial group, that had Beal, Lemons, and all that. Like that, that just worked. And then you had Zicky Dice. And then it, once you brought VSK in, it just started going like a weird direction. And now it's like, right. But again, the group needs a star, right? The group, there has to be a star of the group. And that's why, like, even with like Violent by Design, right? Like, you got Eric Young, right? There's a, there's a central centerpiece of the group. If you could say nothing else about Violent by Design, you could say that's Eric, Young, Eric Young's group. You know what I mean? Like with with the learning tree, you can't even really say this. Is, I mean, you could say it's Brian Myers' group, but like, but what are they doing? Again, they're not fighting it. They're not winning any matches. They're not, like, they don't have any aim or direction. So yeah, you know, like, it's just, I don't know. It's just, it feels like a waste. Like they're not doing anything of note with these guys. So um, uh, backstage, we got to see uh, Scott Demore running away from, uh, <laughs> running away <laughs> from uh, W. Morrissey to cut off Matt Taven, Vincent, PCO, Mike Bennett, and Maria Canellis uh, from getting into the show. They did the whole, hey, we got tickets. We got tickets. And Scott Demore takes the tickets and says, I'll give you better than tickets. I'll give you a skybox. So they go to their skybox. They're overlooking the ring as Jonathan Gresham takes on Steve Macklin in a pure rules championship for the ROH World Championship. Um, you know, nice little back and forth here. Um, Gresham defeats Steve Macklin with a figure four leg lock. No, I'm sorry. He, he uh, he, he had him in a figure four and then he pinned him. Right. He pinned him out of the figure Using four. Using leverage. Yeah. Right. Um, and then Steve Macklin refused to shake Gresham's hand after the match. So that was interesting. Uh, and yeah, what and and then the Ring of Honor group actually appeared to leave the arena. So what'd you think about this segment? So before I get into the match, Ian Riccoboni was back on commentary. Fuck, he's good. I I 
told you people before you actually, a lot of you actually heard him. I said, this dude is excellent. And Tom is excellent. And the two of them together are magic. You know, this episode they did the, you know, Mickey James is on and they brought, you know, they brought people in, in the booth like they did last week. But these two are magic together. They're, they're so good. And Ian Rick and Bonnie tweeted that Scott DeMore was calling him, him in for a meeting, kind of kind of teasing. I don't know, because Ring of Honor isn't going to actually do TV going forward. What they're going to do is they're going to take their main titles. They're going to do the pay-per-views, obviously. But what I'm understanding is they're going to take their titles. They're going to be defended around the world at independent shows. And they're going to be re- they're going to record those shows like Impact does. Uh, or record those matches, and then that's what they're going to air as the TV show is independent uh, title. The title matches being defended on independent scene. That's what I'm understanding, at least. Mm-hmm. Someone can clarify that if that's wrong, but that's what I'm understanding. So I don't think Ian Riccoboni, bon- outside of the pay per views that Ring of Honor does, which is probably going to be quarterly, isn't going to have much of a job with the, within that company. He's probably going to play some... He might have a backstage role there, but I think there's a, a place for him in Impact. If he says, I want to do this more on a full-time basis than, than what Ring of Honor can offer me. I don't think he's leaving Ring of Honor. I don't think that's happening. So we'll see. Right now, it's a nice touch that he just does the Ring of Honor title matches. And I, everybody out there that think that was just like a crazy person talking about Impact's commentary all these, all these years... And even talking about Dave Penzer calling the matches, like, you guys hear now how good commentary is supposed to sound. You hear how good ring announcing is supposed to sound. Uh, And I think it really took it happening on the Impact show for people to realize, yo, they they were missing these things. You know, you can say, like I said, I always say I like Excalibur a lot. If you're someone who likes Excalibur and you listen to him on AEW, you're like, okay, I enjoy him, but you're not necessarily saying, oh, Impact's missing Excalibur. Like, it wasn't until we started getting really good commentary, really good ring announcing on the actual Impact on Access TV show that people like, holy shit, I didn't realize how much they were losing in this area, you know, compared to what it should be. So I, I, I think people are starting to see now um, how ring announcing should sound. And I, I heard that... Uh, I mean, this isn't inside scoop. A lot of people heard this, that Iceman is going to do the ring announcing at the next set of tapings. Hmm. It's from, you know, he does BTI. Interesting. I find him, what's that? I said interesting. Yeah, I find him really annoying personally, but I don't know how he sounds as a ring announcer. So maybe he's good. I don't know. Uh, I, I find his on-screen persona a little annoying, but, you know, we'll we'll see. We'll see how that sounds. Everyone wants Melissa Santos back, and we might get her because Brian Cage is rumored to be possibly done here with AEW in February. So I think Impact would bring him back. Personally, uh, from what I was told a couple years ago, Melissa didn't really want to leave. I don't know how how accurate it was. I was under the impression from what I was told that she didn't actually want to leave Impact Mm -hmm. because she she liked the Impact schedule quite a bit. Right. Obviously, right. she was working doing the Twitch show. Long yeah, she was working from home. She's getting paid yeah. to work from home. Yeah. So of course she liked from, that schedule. I like that schedule too. <laughs> but from what I understood, uh, she had a lot of interest in remaining there. I think Brian K just wanted a bigger platform. Mm-hmm. That didn't work out for him. Um, so with all that being said, Steve Gresham versus Steve Macklin. I mean, um, Jonathan Gresham versus Steve Macklin. Macklin. I love this. I just like wrote down what a match. I was very engaged into it the whole time. Um, I, I do like the pure rules. It just adds a little something different than just watching a normal wrestling match. They just tweak the rules just enough to make it make it unique. And I knew Macklin was going to lose this match. And I was like, dude, they, he can't lose two matches in a row, two title matches at that. He can't lose his next title match, whatever it is. He, he cannot because he's lost two already. But... The way that they did the finish here was very uh, unique. You know, using the ropes for leverage, pinning him in the figure four. Like, mm. Macklin still was strong even though he lost. You know, so I really liked the way that happened. I laughed at the YouTube description of this match because they were just like, uh, 
well, not of this match, but the YouTube description of the show was like decorated veteran. And I thought they were going to be talking about Steve Macklin. And they said decorated <laughs> veteran, Charlie Haas. And I was like, yo, you can't talk decorated <laughs> veteran in a paragraph that has Steve <laughs> Macklin in there and not, and not talk about him. That's, that's <laughs> insanity. But I really like this. I'm enjoying the Ring of Honor title being defended on Impact right now a lot. Mm. Okay. All right. All right. That makes one of us. All right. The <laughs> uh, <laughs> we got the Good Brothers, uh, Heath and Rhino, and uh, wait, 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 Doc Gallows, and Joe Joe Doring with Carl Anderson, Eric Young, and Diener versus Heath and Rhino. All right, the war involving Heath, Rhino, and the Unholy Alliance continues as Carl Anderson steps into the commentary booth alongside Tom Hannafin. Diener provided a distraction on the apron, allowing Gallows to deliver a big boot to Rhino. Doring joins the assault as he and Gallows take Rhino off his feet with a double shoulder tackle. Both Gallows and Rhino are down following a double clothesline, leading to a pair of tags. The pace quickens as Heath sends Doring to the floor following a clothesline. Doring hits Heath with the VBD flag while the referee is distracted, followed by a double choke slam from Gallows and Doring to win. Ooh. So before this, they did the impact flashback. We haven't got the flashback in a while. I thought that was interesting. I was like, who from WWE is in this flashback and why are they showing it to us? Right. And it was odd because it was showing a knockouts title match. So <laughs> thank God they only play like 30 seconds of this. Why, when you have an actual knockouts tag team title match featuring Madison Rain, why are you showing a flashback of her losing a knockouts tag team title match? <laughs> I was like baffled. Like what? What did, what purpose did this serve? They wanted to show her versatility. Yeah, I, I guess so. Hey, <laughs> remember what Madison looked like when she was a blonde? I, well, I, I just, uh, I don't know. This match, Gallows and um, Doring versus Heath and Rhino, didn't care. I, I don't like Balan by design. I just, I just don't. Yeah. And um, Heath and Rhino, I was optimistic for Heath when he joined. But once mm. once they kind of just went back to him, I was not. I know you weren't. No, <laughs> I, I was optimistic. <laughs> I'm not saying I dislike him. I actually kind of do like him. But once they teamed him with Rhino, I'm just like, man, they're just going back to that well, and it just hasn't been that good. I mean, um, they had the little storyline. Well, I should say the little storyline with Violent by Design. It's still going. It didn't mm. matter. Rhino. Right, right wins a grudge match and it's a no DQ and you know, the hardcore war and shit, it, it, none of that matters. Like they're just still freaking fighting. And I'm just like, what? I don't understand why they had this match. Well, I, I know why they had it because they were just like, uh, we lost a hardcore war. Carl Anderson got pinned. Like these two guys, if they wrestled, they could win. And that's like what they're doing. But like, why, why, like, what is this really accomplishing? These guys, you know, I don't know, dude. I'm just like, what the, hell is this i didn't really care the the choke slam is not one of my favorite finishers in the world especially the double choke slam like yeah, if you're not kane and the undertaker like that's not cool so no, no. um i don't know it, it was a good episode overall but I, like this particular match was just this the the part the point in it where i was just like i don't really care about this i just want it to be over yeah the impact tag team championships are non-existent they don't exist like the the impact tag team championships there's just what are they? You know what I mean? What are they? Um, you know, I'm, I'm interested to see like when the good brothers contract comes up, if they resign with impact, because I just don't see the value. I haven't seen the value, nothing about them. Like I don't need to stop in. I don't stop fast forwarding when I see them on my screen. <laughs> I don't check something out because I know fast forward on. even more. Yeah. I mean, like I, you know, but I, I just, I, I don't, I don't, I don't get the value. You know what I mean? Again, maybe they're drinking buddies with Scott. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But, um, you know, people still think they're cool. Um, I guess, uh, we should take a poll. Do people still think that, uh, these guys are cool. Do people still think the good brothers are cool. Do people still think the bullet club is cool? I need to know it's 2022. I need answers. I need answers. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> excuse me. The road to no sur surrender continues next week. Uh, Thursday on Impact, Knockouts World Champion Mickey James addresses the Impact Zone just two days before she competes in the Royal Rumble and so much more. You know what's probably going to happen in that match? 
Mickey James is going to come out. She's going to uh, address the crowd and she's going to get interrupted by a parade of challengers. She's going to get like Tasha Steele is going to come out and then Chelsea Green's going to come out and then the uh, Lady Frost is going to come out and they're all going to talk about wanting to challenge Mickey James. That's probably what that'll be. And they're all going to brawl and she's going to throw them over the top rope. Yeah, <laughs> probably. <laughs> That's probably exactly what's going to – ew, gross, gross, yeah. gross. All Please right. Don't. Uh, <laughs> Please don't. Okay. Um, so the main event was – Chris Saban joining Tom Hannafin on commentary for Charlie Haas's in-ring debut against Josh Alexander. Haas targeted the knee of Alexander early, going for wraparounds, uh, excuse me, wrapping it around the, the, the steel ring post. Haas dealt further damage to the knee with a submission attempt. Both men exchanged one German suplex after the other. Haas counters the C4 spike, then spears Alexander's midsection in the corner. Haas hits an overhead belly-to-belly suplex for two. Alexander turns the tide, locking in the ankle lock to win by submission. Uh, after the match, Haas and Alexander embrace in the middle of the ring until out of nowhere, the Ring of Honor 5 attack them from behind. Rich Swan, Willie Mack, Heath, Rhino, Jabber Squad, uh, Eddie Edwards, and Chris <laughs> Saban came out to make the save, sending them scurrying into the crowd, but they didn't scurry into the crowd. They went back up to the balcony where Maria Cal- Canellis, uh grabbed the mic and revealed that they will now be called Honor No More. And that's pretty much how the show went off the air. So what would you think about this final segment? The Charlie Hosh, Charlie Haas, not Hosh, Charlie Haas, Josh Alexander match and the revelation that the Ring of Honor Five, the Ring of Honor Renegades, the Ring of Honor Invasion will be called Honor No More. So the match itself, I said last week, I liked Charlie Haas a lot when he wrestled. So when he came out, I didn't necessarily look at it like, oh, here's another old person coming. I, I like Charlie Haas. So I was interested to see the match. Um, you know, it was a one-off. He's not signed to Impact Wrestling. I thought he looked pretty old in this match, to be honest. I, I, I wasn't, I think there was reviews of the match that were a lot higher than I thought the match actually came off. I didn't think it was a bad match. I just, you know, people were like, oh, this, you know, Josh Alexander versus Charlie Haas at the tapings was, was, you know, was fire. Like, I didn't get that. But I thought it was cool. I did kind of enjoy seeing Charlie Haas in the ring again. Uh, I guess he got injured in this match. I didn't see where. I couldn't see where either, but I could tell he rolled out of the ring like, yep, you know, right. he really didn't want anybody to touch him um, as the the Ring of Honor guys were attacking everybody. So, uh, yeah, I saw a lot yeah. of stuff on social media about him being like helped out uh, with, by uh, medical assistance and all that stuff. So apparently he was really hurt, but I didn't see where it happened. Yeah, I, I, I don't have a clue. So it could have happened with the ankle lock. I, I don't I don't really know. But you know the match was okay. I liked um, Chris Saban has a good personality, so he you know he he worked on commentary. I like the the honor no more name a lot. I think that's creative. It makes sense. You know, they I, I'm glad they got a name quick instead of the Ring of Honor Five. Like I was glad that didn't ex, you know go past this episode. Um, I'm really ex- this is a really cool part of the what Impact's doing right now. Matt Taven can talk. He he's he's got some promo chops. Wow, and we finally got Maria Canellas talking. You know, in the past we we hadn't heard from her in these last couple episodes. I don't think, and uh, you know she she can cut a promo too. She's she's you know improved quite a bit. It's weird to see Mike Bennett as more of a. You know, if this were four years ago, he would have been in the forefront of this thing. He would have been the dude talking, and he's just off to the side. So. I'm in, I'm real interested in it, and I know with the next set of tapings, they I know that OGK is supposed to take on Swan and Mac, so that's gonna be that's gonna be pretty cool. And I don't know where it's gonna go ultimately, though. I don't know if it's gonna be like at, at the pay per view. There's another hardcore war or some kind of five on five match, and then if the Impact guys win, these guys disappear forever. I I don't know, but I like what they're doing right now, and it's a part of the show that I'm excited to see from week to week, like how it's going to progress. Okay. Um, so 
for me, um, I mean, like, you know, I've, I've said it a million one times. Like, I, I didn't really watch Ring of Honor. Um, the only time I ever watched Ring of Honor was when they were the lead into Impact on Destination America. Um, and at that time, I did get a chance to see uh, Mike Bennett and Matt Taven with Maria, and I loved their act. I loved it. I loved it. Um, I think there's even a little bit of like Adam Cole with them together. And um, I don't remember loving Adam Cole though, but the, uh, <laughs> but, um, but, but, but I remember like seeing them and seeing like, oh man, I'd like to see those guys in impact. I remember thinking that. Um, and then when Mike Bennett came to impact, when Mike Bennett and Maria came to impact, I loved it. I was a big fan. Um, you know, that never got off the ground the way it probably should have. But I remember thinking that I hope Matt Taven would come join them because I was like, even though Mike Bennett's not popping off as a single star the way I thought he might, you add Matt Taven back to this mix and now you got a good tag team. And at the time they had the Wolves and, and you know, whatever. Um, But, you know, I, I just, I don't know, man. Like I said, so the fact that they have a name, Honor No More, right? That tells me, that tells me that they're signed to Impact. That's what that tells me that they have a they if they have a name. I feel like that suggests that they're signed to Impact. Um, I don't know what's up with this Vincent dude. Like he has a, a head full of gray, a gray gray locks, and I just uh, I don't know. Like I like what what is this dude supposed to be? I don't know. Uh, PCO again. Like uh, I get the novelty. He's like a Frankenstein, but um, I just I don't know, man. I gotta see it. I gotta see it. It's gotta grow on me. Um, I think that, you know, Matt Taven was the ring of honor world champ, uh, for a little while and it was pretty rejected. Um, from what I saw from people online, they didn't love the idea of Matt Taven in that position, but I'm getting to see now that, like you said, he can talk. Um, and that's good. Cause you need to be able to talk. So, uh, once the smoke clears and the dust settles with this, you know, I'm hoping that, um, you know, Bennett. Taven and Maria will stick around and impact for the long haul and the rest of those guys, you know, I can probably do without. So uh, this kind of brings me to um, another thing I wanted to talk to you about, which was, so right now impact is riding the wave of the ring of honor. You know, they're basically trying to breathe some life in the ring of honor. They're doing ring of honor a favor, a huge favor right now by basically giving ring of honor a television home um for you know for their championships and for some of their high profile wrestlers and um which is cool i think it's 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 giving them some buzz in the moment and this is you know look anytime you can jump on a wave that's gonna get some eyes on your product and the viewership num ship numbers are up so i would say it's working to that effect but with all of the writing of this particular wave and then the, you know, going back to the writing of the forbidden door wave, it doesn't seem to be resulting in impact fans having a more clear definition of who impact is. So I said all of that just to say, you know, I think impact should be trying to create waves and not just ride waves. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know. I mean, like, do you, you know, what do you think impact can do differently in that regard to have more of its own identity and not just be the wrestling company that picks up whatever's trending? Oh, there definitely has to be a shift in mindset, but we have, we've never seen that mindset shifted the way that it should be. Do you, you agree that that's, that that's 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 kind of what they're doing right now, though? Is just riding whatever wave is out there. Yeah, yeah, and that's the you look at their social media. You know, uh, you know, Bobby Roode's in this match, so we're going to tweet out Bobby Roode video. Like, and I've said this is a social media strategy in, in the grand scheme of social media. You talk about what's trending uh, to get hits and, and views and, and listens, and that that is a strategy. But because Impact has a history of piggybacking off other companies, it doesn't work for them. It comes off, it comes off desperate. But that has been their social media strategy forever now. Uh, you know, we're not going to post, we're not going to give a shit about uh, Eli Drake 
until he pops up on NXT for the first time. Like, oh, check out this classic Eli Drake match, you know? So they've been, they, they've just been, they've had that mindset for a while. You can go back all the way back to the Hogan and Bischoff days, and you can take it all the way to now. And the, the, the mindset has, I mean, not the mindset, but the, the way people have always looked at TNA and Impact is that we're going to piggyback off WWE. And we're going to sign the WWE talent. And they're going to come here. They're going to be stars. And there's really nothing they've done in the last, you know, 10 years that makes me feel any different. You know, you had the inspiration come in. They went on night one. I was there when El, El Patron won the title on night one. I was just baffled that they did that. I, I was like, surely uh, when I watch this on television, it's going to be the match is going to be completely edited out and he's not really going to win the title. Like, I just, I could, you know, they have a history of, of doing this. You know, Morrissey's in the title picture right now. Comes, you know, and again, it's been organic. But he's still former WWE guy. Uh, Cardona, still former WWE. Like you, you're you're bringing in guys. We didn't get you know Rohit Raju never got elevated to the main event, even though he did everything they asked of him. He never got there. You know there there's the match where Falaba had with uh, Austin Aries back in the day, where it was so good and so well received, and it was like, yo, you can actually begin to elevate this guy at this point. Uh, he, you know, the next next week he should have a, a another big match, but win. You know, like that didn't happen. We just haven't seen them take someone from scratch w- within and just like elevate him to that main event scene. It, it just it just hasn't happened. It's always been we're gonna pluck people from here and there, insert them into the title picture. These guys are just gonna stay in the X division. You know, it it just is like. We saw, you know, Rich Swan went from X Division to World Champion, but he's still a former WWE guy. Like Brian Cage, he came from Lucha Underground, so I, I guess that's, you know, he did start from X Division, get up to the World Title, but there's, there's just not a, it just doesn't seem there's a, a, enough focus in we're going to develop our dudes to also be able to get to this level and, and wrestle. Like they're very content with. Hey, we developed developed Eddie Edwards. He's going to be in the main event picture forever. Uh, sometimes he can go down into the mid card. Sometimes the main event, but they're content with saying, "Hey, we got him here. That's all we need in that main event picture." Like there just hasn't been anyone else that they've, you know, yeah. they've they, just they don't really believe in their own product. They don't believe in their own roster. They don't believe in their own guys. Yeah, and, and you know, Ring of Honor would bring every once in a while they bring in someone from the outside, but you 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 can never doubt that. They didn't build their guy their their guys to be the stars of the company. You know? They they always they were never like, let's see who's available from WWE. And it's become, you know, their big marketing strategy around Slammiversary is what former WWE people what WWE people were just released that we're gonna bring into the company. And that's an exciting time every t- every year for everyone. I mean, exciting time of the year for everyone right now. And I, I get excited too, like who's gonna show up? But there's still just a reliance on, on, on someone's name and what they, what they did previous to coming over. And again, you got a guy like Morrissey who you're, he, he's not his WWE gimmick, you know? So, you know, Steve Macklin isn't his WWE gimmick. At least I don't think he is because I <laughs> don't know, actually. So you are bringing in some dudes and, and you're doing good things with them. But we're just not seeing them develop like our our guys. You always say, "Where's our guys?" Like right. we're not seeing that development, and that's part of the brand. You know, that's why it just. It, I was so shocked when they let Rohit go because I was just like, he just, they just never even tried to get him there, and he could have, he could have done it. There's no doubt in my mind. Was he going to be a world champion and a star and a marquee name? You know, I, I can't say that. But he could. I mean, like this. This is wrestling, though. Again, and, and this thing I have to remind everybody, uh, you know, in these conversations about who is a star, who isn't a star, who can and can't be a main eventer. This is a TV show, okay? Michael the Miz Mizanin was the WWE champion for a long time. 
Okay. I think the Miz has admitted in interviews that he's never raised his hand to anyone in anger in his life. Okay. <laughs> that means like he's, he's never been in a fight. Okay. Like it's not about who can and can't like be a star or like, that's not real, bro. It's a, it's a TV show. It's a TV show. It's a TV show. Rohit Raju can be the longest reigning dominant impact champion that there ever was. You can give him goons, have him pull tights and weasel his way out of the championship, defending it like whatever. Like you can do, you can do anything. Why not? Why not? As a matter of fact, I think it's good to have a guy like that who's a homegrown guy and you give him a good run because it says something good about your company. It says you can come and you can build yourself up and, you know, and you can have a run as a world champion. I mean, like, but what it all comes down to is I think, you know, I, you know, I'm not in the wrestling business, so I can't say what's a better strategy or not. But I think a lot of people just believe, you know, if you have a star, it'll attract people. And if you don't, then it won't. But I think you got to make the star. I think you got to make the star attractive. I think you got to present this guy in a way like when somebody's when when Brock Lesnar's music hits and the room explodes, it's due to the years of being conditioned of what it means when Brock Lesnar's music hits. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Same thing with any and every star. And that's on the company to condition us what it means when that person's music hits. I say it every time Josh Alexander's music hits and it's, it's, you know, it doesn't have a great impact in, in the arena and Josh Alexander just walks out and walks to the ring. And I'm like, dog, like, how is this the person who you're trying to build? You know what I mean? I'm like, I'm like, just do something. Drop the lights, flash some lights. Like like Moose's entrance is like a star. Yes, yeah. exactly, exactly. It's you like know, when, like, I'm, I'm going to interrupt you here for a second, like when Stone Cold's glass hits and it's not him wrestling, if you just hear the glass hit, everyone knows, you know, say it's, it's during a segment or something, everyone would know, yo, this motherfucker is going to come down. No matter what happens, someone's going to get stunned before he leaves. Exactly. You know, there, there's something there's that gonna be some middle fingers. There's going to be some beer. It's right, going to be a right. good time. Most importantly, it's going to be a good time, right? Like it's your condition, your audience Dude. that that's what you're going to see when this guy comes out, you know? Yeah. And so again, and anyone, 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 anyone can be champ. <laughs> Okay, like it's, a, it's a, like the, I, I, again, like to so all the AEW fans out there, anyone, anyone can be champ. Woo! Yes, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay, like you know, y'all out here trying to tell me Adam Cole is great. Anyway, um, <laughs> the, uh, so yeah, man, I just think that with with when it comes to impact, man, like I don't know, you know, again, I don't, I don't claim to have you know, knowledge of how to promote wrestling, but I know they ain't doing it. You know what I mean? Like, I know they ain't doing it. I know that they're, they're, they're too busy trying to ride waves. And I think you got to make your own waves. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's the, uh, you know, Jay-Z said, don't go with the flow, be the flow. Okay. Right. Be right. The flow. And I think impact wrestling is, is too busy trying to go with the flow right now. They're going with the flow of, you know, ring of honor is, you know, has people that are available they're getting these people on their TV and it's resulting in, you know, a, a, a viewership boost. And I guess if you're happy with that, like, that's fine. But I think if you create something that people can feel like they're in on the ground floor of, that's how you're going to get, you know, arenas full of people cheering and screaming and getting excited when people's music hits because they feel like they're a part of the wave. You know what I mean? Instead of just, again, riding the wave that the whole, uh, that everybody knows about. Right. Because at this point, if you don't have, that's part of your brand to be, to say, you know, to have some homegrown dudes, that's just part of your brand. If you don't do that and commit to that, you're just an independent company. And that's how, that's how it's going to feel. That's how it's going to come off. Yeah. And 
every time they're just kind of like, you know, we signed this person and this, it doesn't feel the same as it did four years ago because right. it just felt like every time someone's like, hey, I signed with TNA, you're kind of like, okay, cool. Now that I got signed with Impact, you're like, did you? Or you're just here for a set of tapings or whatever. Right, like, right. It's, There's so many people just coming in and out that you don't know who to get behind. So you just start mm-hmm. getting behind the brand as a whole, and that's what that's what independent company is. I mean, it just it just comes off as an independent show. But that's not to downgrade what they're doing right now because what they're doing right now is good and it's interesting, and I'm having fun watching. I'm liking the Ring of Honor stuff. I'm it, the show feels very different. It's it's looking a little bit different. So I, I, I'm cool with all that. I, I like that. I enjoy it. But you're not, you know, we we talked about this a couple of weeks ago. AEW has their their guys who are like, this is our our pillars, you know. I don't agree with the pillars personally. I think Jungle Boy is horrible. Uh, wrestling wise, he doesn't do anything that none of no one else is doing over there. He can't cut a promo. He's built like a fourteen year old girl. Like that dude's not going to be world champion, you know. Darby, oh, I've said that. he probably is. He yeah, probably <laughs> is. <laughs> oh my god. But, you know, and, and I've talked about Darby in the past. I said I've seen him in person. When I saw him, I thought he was a kid cosplaying as Darby Allen, And I'm not even saying that to be funny. I really thought that's what it was. And I was like, oh, my God, that's actually him. Um, and then, you know, I, I guess Sammy Guevara and, and MJF are different stories. But you have to have your dudes that are like, hey, we're committing to these dudes here no matter what. You know, we just we just don't get that vibe. So it just – it's not to say what they're doing is bad because it's not. It's good, but we're we're just not not getting that. I, I am optimistic within the knockouts division we're gonna start seeing that a little bit. Mm-hmm. There's no doubt in my mind that the knockouts tag team champions aren't gonna be girls you bring in from WWE or whatever. But as far as like the singles wrestling, you know, when they bring in girls like uh, Lady Frost and then and as I said, Giselle Shaw is really good. When they're bringing these gals in, I'm like, yo, they have some, they have a legitimate shot to build these girls into something, in my opinion. But yeah. overall, it's still, who, who's, who can we get from this company? You know, and you said this when Kenny Omega was on, and you said when this forbidden door is closed, or when Kenny Omega is not on the show anymore, what are you gonna do? What do you got? You know, like, are are you building? Yeah, there was a program in place to build Josh Alexander, but there should have been programs in place to build quite a few dudes so that when Kenny Omega mm-hmm. was off your show, it's mm-hmm. like, okay, we still have some reasons to, you know, to, to, to watch us, you know? Yep. Yep. But no, exactly. 100%. I, and like, just to just go drill down on that point, just a little, just, to, just for a tiny second, you're right. On that episode where everyone was anticipating what's going to happen with Kenny Omega, there should have been feature packages about who's Josh Alexander, who's Trey Miguel, who's Moose. You know what I mean? Like whoever are like your, the guys that are going to be the pillar of your show that you want people to say, I want to see more of that woman or that man. You should have been like, again, that whole show should have been designed around, you know, getting people back the following week for the impact talent. But instead they built that whole show leading up to a horrible ass promo with Kenny Omega where he said nothing, you know what I mean? And like, it, it's just, you know, oh man. But again, this goes back to what we were talking about, how this whole conversation started, just riding the wave, man. They were happy to be a part of the Kenny Omega is the greatest wrestling in the world, wrestler in the world story. And they did not want to take that opportunity to elevate their brand as a whole. So here we are. Rock right. you like a hurricane. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. So we got a few minutes left. You want to hit a couple of questions from the comment section? Yeah, let's do it. All right. So while I'm pulling up these questions from the comment section, everybody, please, please, please remember to drop your name and where you're from and your comments below this video in the YouTube channel. Okay. So we'll start with. Side Blurry 28, who said, this week's show did a good job of being more creative and trying different things, and it worked. Impact's roster is not that big, plus lack of jobbers. So talents that should be getting wins often face each other 
thus why the momentum is not very consistent with them. That Cyberry 28, listen, I want that you're 100 percent right. You're that is that is correct. <laughs> you all correct. You're <laughs> you're right. I mean, like, you know, I'm a big fan of um of 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 like squash matches because the whole point of that stuff is building up the character, getting the audience used to the act, so that when you put them in a big match, when one of their big moves gets countered, we were expecting it to go well, right? Because we got used to the act. We don't get a chance to get used to the act because you're putting two talents who should be getting wins in matches against each other before we have a chance to care about either of the characters significantly. And it really stunts everybody's momentum. So uh, Cyblurry28, th thank you for that comment. Um, Life After Death Tube says, Love how you guys on this channel have always called it the way you see it. I don't agree with you guys, but I don't always agree with you guys, but I appreciate your opinions and I love all caps to see how excited you guys are for this brand right now. Hard to kill is possibly the best pay-per-view in years. And let's hope they keep this momentum up, especially with Jay White's upcoming return and Mickey James's Royal Rumble appearance. Now is truly a crazy time to be an Impact fan uh bq you want to respond to life after death tube <laughs> i love that screen name that uh that handle that's funny um yeah th thanks for that um that's why i've always said you know when i say something's good i want you guys to know that coming out of my mouth like it's not lip service it's not and, and yeah people aren't always going to agree with us but it's not lip service when when we say yo this was good like we really want those words to mean something because there's too many people out there i forgot what you said you said something about the impact fan base earlier there's too many people who like everything and they find a positive in everything even the things that aren't good and um by us pointing out what's not good you know when we say something's good you know it it, it actually has some weight to those words so uh yeah. you know appreciate that but i'm i'm excited as i said i feel um very rejuvenated but I still b believe in what we just said a while ago that they are riding a wave. Um, I I'm still waiting to see them build build within a little bit, and and you know, so they don't have to rely on Eddie Edwards to be the guy to run down with the kendo stick. Like, right. One day I want to say speed speedball. Um, so I'm gonna use this example. There was an angle with Tessa Blanchard and OVE years ago, where OVE was whooping her ass in the ring. And I was like, yo, and, and uh, so they needed someone to save Tommy, uh, Tessa Blanchard. Tommy Dreamer runs down with that kendo stick. And I was like, yo, they could have taken anybody from the roster. Trey Miguel could have ran out and immediately elevated him into the, you know, just by default, put him into the main event, into a main event angle. And you could have elevated him, but you like rested on your laurels. Uh, uh, let's get Tommy Dreamer out there. And Eddie Edwards fills that spot right now. Like we need someone to run out to come save the day. They have to be a semi big deal. And it's always Eddie with the stick. Like I want to see speedball Mike Bailey run out one day and all of a sudden just like, whoa, he, he involved himself in this angle. Like, you know, so I, I do really believe in what we just said to build some stars within but i'm i am excited about what they're doing oh yeah all right <clears throat> uh in baldwin 45 uh frequent contributor to the to the comment section he says yes. seems to me like impact has really improved since don Callis left maybe Callis was holding the promotion back i don't know what goes on behind the scenes but i get the sense he wasn't pulling his weight and that issue with scarlet's with Scarlett brought the promotion some serious negative press. Maybe AEW's game gain is Impact's gain. What do you think about that one right there? So before in the pandemic era when NWA was doing, I, I really applauded them on this, but because they didn't have a show, everything was crazy. And I mean, the beginning of the pandemic, they came out with a YouTube schedule of, you know, original content Monday through Friday that was getting keeping people engaged while they couldn't put on shows. And then when, when the hap the whole thing happened with Dave Lagana, like they, they just canned everything. But one of those things was Eli Drake had a podcast that he was doing. Eli Drake's show or something along those lines. And he was he was talking about impact and he said the guys over there 
are the most self-congratulating do-nothings I've ever met in my life. And then he goes, well, actually, no, Scott Demore actually does work. He's like, he's like, but he's like the other guy, you know, you couldn't find him. If you, if you need to look for him, just find out where Scarlet was, Ooh. you know, that was like his, his comment. But yeah, I call him a self, self-congratulating do nothing, you know? So I, I really agree with that comment. I think that, um, I don't, I, I think Scott Demore provides a lot more to this company than Don Callis ever did. And as I've said many times with the, I thought, I thought he ruined the commentary uh, with, with uh, Josh, you know, just, just every episode, just being a different character basically. And sometimes being serious, sometimes, sometimes not. And, you know, being very annoying, like saying Madison Hart, Madison rain trained at the dungeon and talking about that like 50 times throughout her match. And just, he was just annoying. Um, I think, I think I'm, I'm glad he's gone personally. Yeah, you know, I was not aware of uh, this podcast interview. Um, I, I so I didn't have a, a good sense of who did what. Um, I thought that Don Callis was actually responsible for uh, some of the relationship mending, but actually, I did some reading up and I found out that Scott Demore actually really did go above and beyond to go out of his way to mend fences for Impact and you know New Japan Pro Wrestling, and so he was probably very responsible for a lot of the, uh, you know, bridges being built that we're seeing now, which really has been the basis for Impact Wrestling for the past year. Um, The coolest thing about Impact Wrestling has been all the other promotions they've been working with. And I said that before, you know, you got to give Scott Demore his flowers on this, man. Like in the last year, Impact has worked with every major wrestling company in the world, including WWE. And I think if it wasn't clear before, you know, who's responsible for that, it's clear now, right? And so um, so Scott Demore, man, you know, he better be getting mentions for, you know, promoter of the year um, just for the fact of creating this type of content. You know, people can still try to turn up their nose to impact all they want to, but they're, they're more and more, like, they're kind of being forced to say, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take a look. I'm not going to like it because the internet says I'm not supposed to like it, but... I'm going I'm to watch, I'm going to see, you know? So <laughs> I think, um, you know, they're putting people in a position to, you know, really actually have to give impact a try. And now the trick is when they look, you got to do something to make them stay for the people who are actually going to be here. So that's that. Uh, in Baldwin 45, thanks for the comment. Um, Bland Skies 24 says, I think more and more, it seems like Scott Demore is a heel, because all these dudes that Josh has to face before Moose, I think storyline wise, it could be interesting for Scott to turn heel, but I doubt it would happen. What do you think about that one, B? So that was one of the things I talked about in my in my um, podcast upload as well, is that I think Scott Demore is going to turn heel. But even if he doesn't turn heel, he's a heel. He's a heel on the show because he's <laughs> he pops up a lot more than he needs to. He's not doing heel things right now because he's not involved in Josh Alexander. But every time he is, and even when he involved himself in Morrissey the last couple times, it's very um, protective of Moose, you know? Mm. So yeah. I just... I, yes, you're right. That is a theme. Right. So it's one thing if it just happened with Josh, but now we saw with Morrissey too. It's like, hey, he's, he's defending the title against someone else tonight. You know, and it's Zicky Dice, like... Really, that's what you signed off on as a businessman, you know, to promote your show. So I, I, I think the tea leaves, I'm trying to look to see within the tea leaves. I think that, I think they're dropping the hints. I could mm-hmm. be completely, excuse me, completely wrong. But whether they turn him a heel or not, he's a heel because he's just, we're going to say a lot of positive things about Scott Demore all the time. You know, we just finished saying that he's, great for impact wrestling but his on-screen character is annoying <laughs> you know so that's why i'm like i'm like he he's a heel dude so you know i don't know just like the headset and the you know back when he used to <laughs> always holding papers and shit like it just uh, it just comes across so annoying like i yeah, feel like it has yeah. to be like it's it's done on purpose like there's no way he's trying to come up come off like a likable character but 
I and know. I think when you put all that together, the idea of him out there getting heel heat for Moose, you know, I think could be something, man. It could be something. I mean, like, you know, what if we did, so, you know, what if, if there was like a grand swerve here where, you know, he's putting roadblocks in the way and Josh Alexander finally, you know, finally gets his match with Moose and, you know, Scott Demore comes out and pulls the screw job. And, you know, so then again, we go with more of a run with Moose, with Scott Demore as his, you know, talking head, just getting the crowd, you know, he fired up for him. Um, I could see this being a thing, man. I could see it being, a, I could see this being a thing that works in arenas. Um, they would need to replace the heel GM. I mean, the, the, the authority figure. Um, but I don't know, man. I, this, this could work. I could totally see. This well, they have Gail Kim on the show now. That's true. See, that's the other, the other. Kim? Right. And here's the other thing. There was, I don't say, I don't think I was picking up on this too much, but some fans watching the show, when Moose was being primed to take on Kenny Omega, it, it almost seemed like Don Callis at the time was almost teasing like an alliance with Moose. Mm. Because he was, he was recognizing that Moose was a legitimate threat where they weren't treating Rich Swan like that, but they were like with Moose... You know, remember in the tag team match, he was trying to yeah, talk yeah. him out of. See, I, I never, I never got, I never took it as that. I always took it as um, Don Callis trying to like butter up Moose to keep him away from Kenny Omega. That's mm-hmm. the way I always kind of took it like that. So I, I was, um, I, you know, I thought he was just trying to like, you know, tell Moose the things he wanted to hear to keep him away from wanting to get the world title shot. So that, that's the way I thought that was going to go. Yeah, p- perhaps, but I don't know. I, I, I think it's going that direction personally. Yeah. All right, so Blance Guys 28, thank you for your question. Uh Nar Nalras Nalras Shukri says, Great episode, guys. I see BQ and TW turning baby face on us. They are improving. <laughs> they are improving in the right direction. 2022 should be a great year for impact wrestling. Um, so Narwis, thank you for your comment. But go to hell. I'm a heel. No, I don't know. Oh shit. I'm just. I got a real uh, chuckle out of me. That's funny. Yeah, turning baby face. I don't. I don't do baby face. Okay. I'm not <laughs> heel. I'm just me. Okay. I'm like. I'm like. I'm like the hitman in '98, baby. Okay. I'm like. I'm like Bret Hart in '98. I just give it to you real. Some people gonna like it. Some people not gonna like it. Some people gonna love it. Okay. But it's gonna be real. So that's what you're gonna get with me. No heel. No baby face. Just me. <laughs> um. All right. Let's see. Carol Joseph says, hope I pronounced your name right. Appreciate y'all work. Y'all give an honest critique of the company. Carol, thank you very much. Uh, Carter Inc. says, this week's show was great. Apart from Jake being the guy to play jobber to speedball, Jake is one of the few homegrown bigger guys they have and has all the potential to go all the way like Josh. I just don't get why Impact has given up on him. You want to take that one? I don't know either. I've said many times on this show that he wrestles locally here and he's quite over. And when impact signed him and he became cousin Jake, I was like, dude, that is the biggest go nowhere gimmick. And I just, I was like, dude, I want him to be be Jake something. And then we got Jake something. And then it seemed like they were going to do something with him for a little bit. And I honest to God think that they look at him and like, yo, this guy can carry the world title for any independent company across the nation as with a name like Jake something. But I, d- I don't think they looked at that and said, that's just not a marquee uh, name for a, a, res- a, a televised wrestling company. That's, I really think they just looked at it at the end of the day and were just like, he, you know, he, we haven't really heard him cut promos. We don't know if he can really talk. He's got a great look. But maybe they were just like, he's just a dude. Maybe he's just a wrestler to them. You know, um, I, I, I think the dude has a lot of star potential personally. <clears throat> you know, I, I know from, you know, my conversations with Rohit that Rohit believes in Jake more than he believes in himself, I think. So I, I don't, beats me, dude. I think they, I honest to God, I think they just see an independent wrestler when they look at him. I, I, that's all I can say it is. Uh-huh. All right. 
let's see. So, official Lil Silver says, Impact Wrestling YouTube channel is going up with subscribers now at 4.3 million subs. He also said, 2001 invasion for that time without social media. Back then, it was good at the present time. I don't know nothing about WCW, ECW, just WWE for ones who like type understanding. Uh, okay, this is kind of rambling. Uh, but, uh, all right, we'll go with that. Thank you for your comment, official little silver. Let's see. <laughs> AK Infinity says, yo, by the way, I never knew Jonathan Gresham was that damn short. He is a dwarf. That's not nice, AK <laughs> Infinity. That's not no. nice. Uh, um, <laughs> uh, Michael Spike says Tasha Steeles should win the Impact Wrestling Knockouts Championship, but Mickey James keep angling for a flair match at WrestleMania title for title. Which make there's no no I don't even need to finish no, that. There's no, no way in hell doing that. Yeah, like there's no way, no way. You you can't be a big enough idiot to think it would be a good idea to put your champion in that match. Like, she would get beaten so badly. Like, look at the way they treated Mickie James when she was there. They're not going to have her have a competitive WrestleMania match with Charlotte <laughs> Flair for the Impact title. And they, they'll probably have, like, Charlotte, like, you know, throw the Impact title in the trash on the way out the door or something like that. I don't know. Um, Tasha's beat. not going to beat her. I don't think Tasha's going to beat her, by the way. You don't think Tasha's going to beat her for the title? I think they're, they're going to keep the belt on Mickie as long as possible because of the buzz surrounding her and then the social media hits and the engagement and the traffic. There's just, once you take the title off Mickey James, like what are you going to do with her? She's just going to go back to wrestling on NWA. Like I, I just think to, to maximize her presence on your show, she has to be the champion. I just yeah. think she's going to be a champion the majority of the year. Uh, I, I, highly possible. Highly possible. Um, okay. Let's see. Where was I? Where was I? Where was I? Oh, Humble B says, I haven't listened to the podcast yet, BQ and TW, but BQ watched Pro Wrestling Revolver match between Chris Saban and Diener. Josh Matthews did pretty good calling this match. The digital matches are pretty good. Ace Romero versus Speedball was good also. And he said, I would like to know you guys take on these matches. All right, so I haven't seen any of those matches, Humble Beast. But but from what I've seen from the digital media matches, um, I like the fact that they condense all of them into like under five minutes. Um, because, you know, the idea being, you know, everything on social media in the digital space is very short attention span, right? Um, and so they give you this content you can consume quickly and move on with your day. And I've liked all the stuff that I have seen from that. You got anything to add here? No, that, I, I totally agree with that. Uh, I will watch both those matches. I'll review them on the channel. I was trying to get into a habit of reviewing those matches every week, but they're just not a priority for me to watch. But I will watch them. I've heard good things about the Speedball Mike Bailey and uh, AC Romero match, which was very random after AC's gone. And I remember Chris Saban talking about his match. Who was it with again? Diener. I heard him yeah. talking about it, and he said he told people they need to see that match. So I, I will check them out, and I will uh, I'll, I'll review them on the channel. Yeah. All right, so last question of the day is going to come from N Baldwin 45 who says, WWE's women's roster is untouchable. It's one of the strongest female rosters ever. I agree that Impact could claim to have the number two roster in the States, though. I think even AEW diehard fans concede that there's still loads of room for improvement in their own roster. You can't fault their enthusiasm, but there are so few wrestlers there with much experience. Um, I'll, I'll take this one first. When it comes to AEW's fans, diehard, you know, whatever in their opinion of the roster, say so you can't fault them. Uh, yes, the hell you can. And I fault them very much. Listen, this is one of the things that uh, if you guys want to hear me dive into this a little more, um, you know, please check out the uh, Talking About Pod this week. But one of the things about the AEW roster that, excuse me, about AEW fan base that is just like mind numbing to me is their praising of mediocrity like you know again i talk 
so much about how much they love Adam Cole and they love like the Orange Cassidy's of the world. They love Britt Baker. Did you see that match this week with Orange Cassidy and Britt Baker and, and Adam Cole and uh, Chris Statlander? Like yeah. there was so many botches in that match. You know what I mean? Because they all they all try to do way too much. There was a, a spot where Orange Cassidy dived over the rope and Adam Cole was supposed to have kicked him. He missed him completely. And Orange Cassidy still laid there hurt. Then Britt Baker had like a slight little tap and, you know, fell through the table and it shattered in a million pieces. It's just like, yo, this is not good. This is <laughs> not good. But like, but, but AW fans like praise this stuff and defend it and then have the nerve to be upset when you say something like, well, what's the big deal about Hook? Or, or why can't they, you know, give, you know, certain other wrestlers a chance to win more? You know, though they're not ready and, you know, certain guys got to be stars and all of this shit. Like, like, no, like it's, it's an irrational defense of mediocrity because you claim it to be yours, right? You've decided <laughs> that, that Dr. Britt Baker is yours. She's your sweetheart. Okay. She's your sweetheart. So you're going to defend her no matter what. Okay. I will and, say I, at one point I, before AW existed, I, I said impact should sign Britt Baker as a at the time as a baby face but i felt she was one of like the more tv ready girls on the indies and listen i i'm not trying to tell you that i think Britt baker is bad but bro come on man like i'm just saying would you say that she is as good as her reputation is right now no 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 but she's there's a lot of good about her she's She's improving. She, 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 she's improving. You know. She has improved. We've all seen the development. And, like, I give her credit for that. But, again, like, I feel like people mention her in the same breath as, like, a Bianca Belair. Right, and, right. And it ain't close. It yeah. ain't close. Okay? Like, the gap between Britt Baker and Bianca Belair is, like, the gap between Britt Baker and Jade Cargill. Okay? Like it ain't close, dog. It ain't close. But AEW fans, like I said, they just, you know, you cling to what you like and you defend it blindly. And I just think that's a stupid way to go about anything. Like there's a lot of things I like, but I'll say they're bad when I think they're bad. Hence this podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Anything you want to add there? But was he referring to the women's? Yeah, he was saying about the the women's roster. He was saying that, uh, uh, the guts of the comment was basically saying that Impact could lay claim to being the number two women's roster in the world. I just got on a tangent about AEW in there. Uh, okay. Image. It's the number two. It, 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 won, it, it absolutely is. Uh, around Slammiversary last year, I did an upload on the channel, and I said they had one of the worst rosters. And at the time, the roster was very, very shallow. They, we were getting the same women wrestling every week, so that was the whole reason behind it. And it wasn't a knock on the women itself other than it was just a small division that just wasn't exciting, and the company wasn't doing anything to make it exciting. Since then, it's improved, 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 improved. Um, the AEW women's roster I don't think is as bad as people say that it is. I think there's a lot of really good wrestlers in there. And... I would say I'm probably a bigger personal fan of a majority of those girls compared to the the, the knockouts. I, I'm, I do think the knockouts are better, but um, I am a very big B- Britt Baker fan. My my old lady is too. We, we like um, Britt, Anna J, Ty Conti. I, I'm a very big Jade Cargill fan. I've been an Alley fan, the Bunny forever. I'm a Penelope Ford, Penor, the Penelope Ford fan. I love Serena Deeb. So a majority of those girls are ones who are very high up on my list of favorite female can wrestlers. I, can I just interject here for one second because you yeah. mentioned Serena Deeb. Now, you would have to admit that Serena Deeb is 10 levels better than every other woman you just named. Yes, 100%. She's, she had a match on, I think it was Rampage or Dynamite this past week, where she came out to you know, damn near silence. And by the end of that match, they were cheering for her and she was working heel. Like that is the, the personification of winning over the crowd with your wrestling. She Mm -hmm. is dope, man. 
She's dope. Her character comes across like you believe it. She's an ass kicker in the ring. And that's what wrestling is all about. It's not about the chance. Like the chants are nice. It's fun to say D M D. It's fun to say Adam Cole, baby. Okay. But after that, when the match starts, I got to be engaged with what's happening. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. I got to be engaged with what's happening. And so many people in AEW completely freaking lose you once the match starts because it looks either so fake or just unrealistic or like, or, or, or why is this happening? It doesn't make sense. Like that's 99% of the wrestlers in AEW. And I think I'm I'm so glad you mentioned Serena Deeb because again, like she's amazing. She's dope. She's a, she's an awesome veteran wrestler. You know what I mean? Like she may not, you know, you know, again, we know why Anna Jay and Ty Conti get all the TV time. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) And uh, you know, like, uh, and, 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 you know, they may not, you know, view Serena in that way. Like that may not be what she's selling, but what she's selling is, is good wrestling, good pro yeah. wrestling. You know what I mean? And, and when I say good wrestling, like, I don't mean like arm bars and takedowns. I mean, like you believe when this woman comes out on the stage, somebody is going to get their ass kicked. That's yeah, she's wrestling. Yeah. She's badass. I, I like Chris Statlander a lot too, but those women I named, I I love them. I'm a big fan of them. So as far as like fandom, I probably like more of the women on the AEW side than I do like the knockouts. But I I'm a realist enough to know a lot of those girls suck. A lot of most of the matches suck. There there's some that are very good, and again, I do think the division's better than they get credit for. Um, you know, because you got girls like Karoshita and shit. They they can wrestle, but the knockouts like. There, there's not really a bad match you're going to see. Uh, now, the inspiration versus the influence is probably not going to be that good of a match because they do have some girls in there that are not amazing ring generals. Um, but they're capable. Like Madison and, and, and uh, Tenille are very capable of good matches. But we have both on maybe, the same team. Yeah, I know. They're on the same team. <laughs> what I'm saying, they're, they're still capable. They're not, I don't look at them and be like, oh, they can't freaking wrestle you know right um but when you watch the knockouts you're usually going to get a good match the storylines i've said this before that they put all their energy into the storyline for the knockouts championship and then the rest are just kind of floating around and wrestling um that has to improve but you know there's really not i'm sure there's some combinations like if savannah evans wrestled alicia edwards like it would probably be a horrible match you know, there are some combinations you could put together that would probably suck, but top to bottom, the knockouts are, I mean, they're amazing. And if they're adding some of the girls that they're, we, we know Giselle Shaw, and like, trust me, she's amazing. Um, and, and there's, you know, I off air talked about someone else that was coming back, might have been, might be for a set of tapings, like, she's amazing. So, you know, they're, they're incredible. Like, Jordan Gray is better than anyone on that. It was maybe a section or like Serena Deeb, like on that AEW roster. Right. Yeah, no, 100%. You're right. You're right. Jordan Gray, you need, you need, and you didn't even mention Deanna Perrazzo. Yeah, yeah. Didn't even mention, because that's the big joker, baby. That's the big <laughs> joker if we play in spades. Wow. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, so, uh, you know, uh, by the way, uh, by the way, Deanna Perrazzo posted a lovely photo on her Twitter with some, um, black boots and uh i'll uh, let you go check that out for yourself uh let me right. tell you something. uh i thought things i never thought i was gonna think when i saw a picture of diana Perazzo. so <laughs> um shout out uh to that <laughs> but anyway yeah you know what a little bit of a tangent here no not a big tangent i just want to say i would like to say when it comes to knockouts like i would like to see them get more focused on like the matches they can be having like you know storylines are great and again you have characters like sue young um and 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 that type of thing you know rosemary but i don't know man like it might be time to lean into more of uh Make it a little bit more about the matches, man. Because I think you got some people who can have some good matches. And, you know, again, for a while you didn't. Okay, for a while you didn't. You know, yeah. it was like, okay, we got these 
two great matches that we're going to have with Jordan Grace and Deanna Perrazzo. And now I don't know what the fuck we're going to do. But now they got some women who can wrestle, man. So let's get out there. Let's have some matches, man. And like, you know, I, I, I'm going to keep pushing for this, man. Like, I want a knockout show. Give Gail, Kim, an hour every week on Access TV to see what she can do, see what the knockouts can do. Why the hell not? You know what I mean? Like, Could you imagine what Ty Valkyrie could do with this current crop of crop of females? Yeah, but well, if you book it right, you know, if you yeah. book it right. Because again, like, I was very disappointed with what they did with her and Kylie Ray. You know what I mean? I thought that had great potential. Great potential. And they really kind of, you know, did it in throwaway fashion to get Kylie Ray to a match with Deanna Perrazzo that never happened for, you know, circumstances beyond our control. Um, so, yeah, man, um, I think that's going to do it for our mailbag. Um, thanks to everybody for sending in your, your questions and comments. Drop your questions and comments right underneath this video. Uh, please leave your name and where you're from so we can give you a shout out. Um, BQ. Tell the people where they can find you out here in these social media streets. But I am on BQ Speaks again after that big hack job. I am BQ Speaks again on Twitter. Did you uh, try the 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 password? I uh, did. Combination that I, that I gave you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so nice. it's a Good. very long password now, but it, <laughs> it works. Good. And I got to remember what it is because now, now I feel like I for, Oh, I remember now. Oh, okay. okay. Anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. And then the Impact Lounge on Twitter and Facebook and the and uh, we've been getting some follows there. So thank you. And then the uh, Impact Lounge engagement group on uh, Facebook. Definitely come check that out. So trying to get to our first, like, you know, 100 members in there. And I'm uh, again, I'm not trying to build it to something really crazy. I just want it to be a good group for engagement. Um, relevant questions not just not saying you know ridiculous why isn't ken shamrock where's ken shamrock at like none of that kind of right. crap like this like, you know. like by the way the questions that we had on this week's show were phenomenal like you know it, and a lot of it is dependent on the content we provide you and a lot of it is dependent on the content impact provides us but Coming with good questions, good thoughtful questions, man. Like that was good stuff to everybody. Shout out to everybody who dropped uh, comments in the comment section this week. And that's the type of stuff we're looking for in the Impact uh, Lounge engagement group. Hell yeah. Um, so yeah, you guys can find me at TW Talking About on your social media choice. You can also follow my podcast page at Talking About Pod. That's where I... Uh, you know, I do, I do some WWE stuff. I do some AEW stuff. I do some TV stuff, you know, whatever, you know, uh, you can talk about some stuff I'm watching, all that kind of stuff. Thank you to everybody who's followed so far. Make sure you drop comments under the videos, every single like, you know, uh, interaction and comment is very, very much appreciated. Uh, that's talking about pod T A K L T A L K I N B O U T P O D on Twitter, follow me there. I follow back, tweet me, I tweet back. And yeah, man, that's it. That's all we got for the show for you guys this week. Like I said, before you leave, go ahead and make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Tell everybody how much you like this video. Drop a comment, you know, let us know what you agreed or disagree with. Uh, hit the notification bell so you get notified every time we drop some hot new fire content on this page. Go ahead and drop this chat into drop drop this video into a reddit thread drop it into somebody's facebook chat you know what i mean email to somebody text somebody somebody who thinks we're brilliant or somebody who thinks we're idiots we're here for that too we want all the smoke baby okay tell a friend to tell a friend let's bring more people into the conversation for bq i'm tw peace